these are in listen only mode. Good, good morning, everybody. We could take our seats. Okay, so we'll get this this formal board meeting started. Uh, today is September 27th. Uh, welcome to the formal board meeting of the Board of Supervisors. Uh, we will first uh, call roll. So, uh, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes, good morning. Um, we have Supervisor Gates joining us via the webinar. Here. And Supervisor Galvin also on the webinar. Here. Supervisor Sellers. Here. And Supervisor Gallardo also online. Here. Chairman Hickman. Here, thank you, and thank you to my colleagues. All of you have told me earlier that you're trying to attend the meeting. I've got a, a sick colleague that uh, is at home attending the meeting. I have uh, Bill Gates uh, out on official business, uh, but thank you for joining us. And uh, Supervisor Gardo, thanks for let, letting me know that you're also on webinar, so we're all here. Um, so we'll get going on item, let me see. Item number two, uh, the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance today. Supervisor Gates uh, is sponsoring today. Um, so, Supervisor Gates. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Appreciate the opportunity. Uh, we're thrilled to have Angel Juarez joining us today. He is a veteran of the U.S. Army, so we thank him for his service. And he's also a life member of the American Legion, which does so much in our community, particularly for young people. And finally, he's also the chaplain emeritus of the American Legion Post 41 in downtown Phoenix. So with that, I will uh, turn it over to Mr. Juarez. If we could all please rise. Thank you, members of the board. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. With humble thanks to Supervisor Gates for inviting me to pray with you this morning. We live in exciting times with challenges set for building great foundations for our futures. Our passions and accountable leadership stand together to help us to build. We work to amplify the challenges into the steps that will lift us all. As we remember to invoke the presence of a God who cares, let us pray. Eternal God, all powerful and merciful, look down upon us, your servants, who are committed to serve the districts entrusted to us. Help to lift up our joys and successes of our communities. Help to amplify our vision and passions to multiply in our communities. Humble your servants every day and charge us fair wisdom that guides us to think creatively and mutually to apply the best answers that work each day, to seek justice for the helpless and hopeless. We who are ever reconciling your word as competent leaders, let us seek reconciliation with each other. Remind us that we are the bridges that overcome rivers of strife. We thank you, Lord, for guiding us past missteps for improvement each day. We thank you for this day and all days, and we faithfully invite you to remain among us while we welcome each other as neighbors, facing the same challenges to overcome together for mutual security Amen. with the freedom that you have blessed us to protect. Holy are you, Lord, and in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, with the colors of our nation in place, please join me in pledging allegiance to this great land. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation one under God, nation under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chairman Hickman, members, esteemed members of the board. You're welcome. One second, uh, Bill. Would you? Uh, do you have anything else? Uh, your guest is still at the podium. Yeah, I, again, I just want to say thank you so much for that, that wonderful prayer. And please pass on the gratitude of this board to all of your brothers and sisters at the American Legion for all that you do in our community. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you thank as well. Thank, you. thank you. you for joining us today. Appreciate it. Okay. We will now move on to item number four, which is the pet showcase uh, by Maricopa County Animal Care and Control. And Kim is joining us today. Uh, and she's gone small again on us. <laughs> all right. I got to show you all the varieties of dogs we have. <laughs> all right. 
All right, that way everyone can see his bow tie. This is Locke. Uh, he is six years old. He has been at the shelter since September 4th, which is a pretty long time for such a handsome guy like him. Uh, I may be biased because he looks a lot like my dog at home. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but he is six years old, so that means he has all that puppy nonsense out of the way. He is potty trained, he walks great on a leash, and he's really mellow. He uh, keeps hopping up on my lap just wanting to cuddle up. Uh, he was in my office for a little bit before I came here, and he just jumped into my lap and sat there while I did some work. So he would probably be a good dog for someone who maybe works from home a lot, or maybe someone who just likes to cuddle up on the couch and watch some movies. Also a good thing about Locke here is he's already neutered, so that means he can go home today. And his adoption fee is waived thanks to the Bissell Pet Foundation for our Empty the Shelters adoption event. Okay, great, Kim, thank you. How do you know he's six? Uh, we judge it by the teeth. So it's, he came in as a stray, so it's more or less, you know, our, our vet techs look at it and, and they judge it by the teeth. And his teeth have a little bit of yellow on them, but uh, nothing too concerning. Oh. <laughs> a little white on the face, too. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> Let's not talk about white on the face. No. It's just Let me frosting. see your teeth, Jack. You want to tell us? <laughs> All right. So um, thank you for joining us today. And it's, uh, it's always fun watching the, the selection process. And <laughs> sometimes big, sometimes small, but we got them all. Yeah. Got to uh, keep you on your toes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> No, I know you just want them to fit in your car to get them back to the shelter. So. That too. That helps. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any announcements or corrections to the agenda? Chairman, Supervisors, I have one announcement to the agenda today. Item number 40 on page 20 okay. is the IGA with City of Scottsdale for Affordable Housing. That item is being withdrawn. Okay. Th that's all I have for today. Thank you. Okay. So bef before we get started, uh, it's 9.50. It's, I've given 20 minutes past time for everyone to come in and give a speaker uh, sheet. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and lock up the speaker slips. Go ahead. The public comment. Your documentation says just before the public meeting is going to be yes. So you can that a second time. Trying to make sure that everybody who's come to join us today has the ability to speak to us. And that's now 20 minutes past, uh, so I will go ahead and that's it for the speaker slips. Uh, so, Madam Clerk, about to... Ma'am, you're being called. Okay. Madam Clerk, about how many do you have today? Chairman, I have approximately 13 for public comment. I have received a few for item number 20. I think I lost count. Mm -hmm. Then we have a few other uh, speaker slips for several different items. Um, and then we have speaker form from Mr. Jeff Caldwell, and he's listed several items on his, and then several also from Marissa Hamilton on several different agenda items. Okay. So just to let everyone know, last, uh, last meeting, uh, we, we ran out of time for people that wanted to speak, but they just couldn't take the duration waiting for pu the public comment period. Okay, so I want everyone to realize that I've adjusted my schedule uh, today. Uh, the board has tried the best to do their schedule. We knew we were gonna get a lot of comments today. So uh, let's make sure that when we get to that item, uh, if you have a speaker slip and you are hearing something that you haven't heard or you want to say that you haven't heard yet, um, 
you know, please come up and, and use that time wisely. If, if you are going to go ahead and just say the same things that maybe three or four other people have already said, then it just becomes incumbent on you if you wanna, we wanna come up and use the podium again, because we, we, are, we are listening, and, uh, we, but we do need to get through this meeting, okay? So with that, um, we are gonna go to uh, clerk of the board, item number five, liquor license applications. Locate, uh, A is location transfer for Circle K store number 1130. B is acquisition of control for Cordobella Golf Club. C is new license for Family Dollar Store, 30741. Transportation 6, Patent Easement Abandonment Road File, number PAS-0234. Number 7, Patent Easement Abandonment Road File, number PAB-0228. The board will now consider items 5 through 7. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 5 through 7. Thank you, Jack. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Bill. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under County Officers, Board of Supervisors, eight through nine, reappointment and resignation to the Community Development Advisory Committee. Number 10 is the resignation and appointment to Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, Chairman, excuse me. I do have a few speaker forms on item number 10. Heather, I believe is Heather Zellner, Luann Savat, Marissa Hamilton, would like to speak in opposition to item number 10. I'm sorry, and Mr. Jeff Caldwell on item number 10 as well. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and, Mr. Chairman. So we'll do eight and nine and then 10 separately? Sure, let's go ahead and do eight and nine then. Uh, do I have a motion for eight and nine? Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items eight and nine with a comment on item nine. Great, thank you, do I have a second? Second. Second. Thank you, Bill. Uh, I have a second. Uh, Supervisor Sellers. Yeah, I, I just want to thank uh, Jackie Taylor, who has served as our on our Community Development Advisory Committee since 2014. Uh, she is now resigning from that committee, um, so we will be looking for a replacement, but uh, really appreciate her service for that period of time. Okay, great. Thank you, Jack. Um, and we appreciate it as well. So. Uh, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Hearing none, motion carries. Now on item number 10, we'll go back to that, the uh, resignation and appointment to Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, so if I could have the speaker slips. Uh, Ms. Heather Zellner. Uh, you do have two minutes, and I would like the line to form up. Uh, Luann Savalt behind her, uh, Marissa Hamilton behind Ms. Savalt, and Mr. Caldwell uh, behind the, uh, her. So there's an, four people. If you could form up the line so we can move, move through the comments quickly. I appreciate it. Ms. Zellner, thank you for joining us today. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am actually going to read this talking point because I really think that it's precious and everybody needs to hear it. And then I know that they'll have some other comments behind that, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's, there was extra time put into this, so that's why I wanna do this. Lily Landel is a lawyer from Squire Patton Boggs, which is an international law firm with over 40 offices in 20 countries, which that's wonderful. It was formed in 2014 by the merger of multinational law firm Squire Sanders with Washington, D.C.-based Patton Boggs. It was one of the largest law firms in the world by total headcount and gross revenue, 12th largest firm in the U.K. by revenue, and one of the top 12 by number of countries occupied. They sure know what they're doing. Do not rezone areas to reduce parking or implement policies that will lead to a reduction of vehicle miles driven. Has a presentation on their website called The Future of Transportation and the Path Forward, which supports transportation tyranny policies of intelligence transportation management systems. And it says do not implement charging tax on miles driven. Ensure that zoning regulations prevent public charging stations for EVs from stealing the information the car has accrued. They clearly are a DEI company. Hopefully everybody will 
um, look that up. A DEI company, they are dead set on sustainability. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Ms. Savalt. Hello, I'm gonna make mine real short because she said pretty much what I agree with and um, I would urge you not to approve the appointment of Ms. Lily Landolt um, in the position that she's been um, recommended for. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Hamilton. Chairman, uh, Supervisors, my name is Marissa Hamilton. I'm speaking on behalf of myself, and I just wanna let you know that as far as the time of what this meeting takes today, I was supposed to be on a flight to DC, and I rescheduled it and purchased a, a more expensive flight for a red-eye flight tonight instead so I could be here with you today uh, because we've done a tremendous amount of research on the agenda. Um, my concern with this agenda item is that uh, according to the Ombudsman's guidance on, uh, on uh, the public agendas, there should be sufficient documentation um, attached to the agenda items, and I, there isn't here. Like, there's nothing here as to what, how you vetted this person, what their policies are, and in a uh, presentation called The Future of Transportation and the Path Forward, there's a number of policies that I thought you should be aware of that you have previously stated you oppose, like getting rid of vehicles, for example, and, and personal uh, taxing personal miles traveled. Uh, there's specifically a section in here, uh, it, called It's America, and It's America is basically a program to bring in all the World Economic Forum transportation tyranny policies. Um, they want to, not only do they want to tax vehicles, uh, mild, vehicle miles traveled, um, but they also want to reduce the number of cars on the road. They want to replace it with uh, public transportation. Uh, they want to have, uh, they, they want to change the entire way that we uh, transport today and eliminate our ability to have transportation freedom. So I'd love to be able to hear from this appointee so that you could uh, hear from her what her positions are on this because you previously made a commitment that you would not uh, support these policies here, but with this appointment, it seems you might be. So I would encourage you to vote no on this appointment. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Caldwell. Chair, Supervisors, thank you for the ability to speak today. Um, the main reason why I am concerned with this appointee is because um, she's being placed onto the Planning and Zoning Commission. And based off of the way that the government has operated with reducing our ability to uh, park and all that other stuff, it's through the zoning regulations. And so I am very concerned that she is going to be implementing these policies through changing the zoning in our county. And so with that being said, I highly encourage uh, further questions of the appointee. Thank you. Okay. That, that seals up those four comments. Um, so in front of the board is the item number 10, the resignation and appointment to Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, do I hear a motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I move approval of this item with the comment. Okay, thank you, Bill. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Supervisor Gates. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. As, uh, as you can all see, uh, this is also a resignation, uh, and the resignation is of T.J. Mitchell. I'm very grateful to T.J. for his service. I appointed him to PNC, but he's now my chief of staff, as I announced at our last meeting. So thank you, T.J., for moving from one role to another. And it's very exciting when you do have a vacancy like this on a very important uh commission like this, planning and zoning, to have the opportunity to appoint someone as qualified as Lily uh, Landel. Uh, I've had the opportunity to, to talk with her. The fact that a lawyer in this firm, literally one of the finest firms in the world, would want to serve on our PNZ, we should be thanking her. And that's what I am doing. And that's why I'm proud to uh, uh, move for her to be added to the commission. Um, for people who are referencing things on the website, she didn't write that. This is a firm with many lawyers. Uh, she, she did not, uh, you know, she had nothing to do with 
uh, the statements that have been made. And I want people to understand, I think it's great we've got all these people here today. These are advisory committees. They're important, but they're advisory. This board makes the final decision. So if we disagree with something, even though we respect these nominees, we appreciate their time. In the end, we're going to vote our conscience, and we are the elected representatives of our districts. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Please be quiet, everybody. I would appreciate it so we can get through. Uh, I thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gates, for, uh, for your comments. So I do have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under County Officers, Clerk of the Board, number 11, Underground Conversion Service Area, Exeter Boulevard, 64th Street to 65th Street. Uh, item number 11, the Board will now consider item number 11. Mr. Chairman, uh, with apologies, I'm under the weather today. I move to approve item number 11. Uh, thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Vice Chairman Sellers. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under County Officers, County Attorney number 12, Victims Rights Grant Funding, 13 appointments under Sheriff, 14, accept the State Criminal Alien Assistance Funding, 15, agreement with the Office of Justice Program Bureau of Justice Assistance, number 16, donations, number 17 is under the Treasurer, reach purchase agreement contract. The board will now consider items 12 through 17. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 12 through 17. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Steve. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under Assistant County Manager Leanne Bone, 18, Maricopa County Workforce Development Board Member Termination. Uh, item 18, the board will now consider item 18. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item number 18. Thank you, Jack. Do I have a second? Thank you. I think I saw Bill first. Uh, sorry, Steve. So I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under county offices, air quality, 19, agreement with regional transportation authority. The board will now consider item number 19. I'm sorry for the interruption. I do have two speaker forms. One, both are for item number 19. Patricia Mead, she marked, she does not wish to speak, but wants to reg register her position in opposition. You do want to speak. Come on okay. up. And, and, and the other Blue one? Crawley. And Blue Crawley. Thank you. Um, thank you. Ma'am, I just want to tell you, you did mark the box, not speak, but want to voice an opposition. So, but go ahead. Please do. Okay. So Patricia Mead, um, this might be under number 10. I have a friend who lives in Portland and they have changed the transportation down from 45 or from two lanes down to one lane. And this is ridiculous. Um, people cannot get through. Um, so you're just blocking uh, transportation. And they also, you know, are supporting electronic vehicles, which are almost twice as heavy. So if a pedestrian gets hit by one, they're more likely to die. So this is not to help the pedestrians or anything else. This is just to, I believe it's the globalist agenda to bring hell on earth. And I'm asking you to reconsider not just, you seem to just, um, rubber stamp everything that the globalists want. And I think that's a path to hell. All right, I'm gonna tell and you. you're gonna get a ticket if you don't gonna, stop. No audience outburst. I appreciate your, your words today. We don't need any outburst, yay, nay, or indifferent. So we can continue on. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, now, Blue Crawley. This past week, uh, the RPGA had a retreat 
And on the retreat, it said that they were going to be checking out the uh, five-year transit plan and being active in supplementing it. What they did instead is discuss why they why shouldn't they double the amount of uh, Allied Burton on the light rail for a total of a hundred million dollars a year. But I'm, you know, as you know, I was the one that wrote one of the ones that wrote the uh, Prop 400 part, and when we did that, it was to decrease the amount of vehicles on the road and to provide an alternative. One of the things was circulators and such, and with the board having taken that out, it's one of the drops within the system. And when it comes to uh, reducing the amount of uh, travel program, what the RPTA did was say that we need to make people on the light rail feel safer by doubling up the amount of individuals rather than actively instituting and putting forth a better transit plan, expanding it to the whole county as we're all paying for it, and giving everyone the opportunity to, yes, not have a car and be able to use transit. But the convenience of such is somehow inconvenient to these people. And when it comes to the interaction between the three methods, as you know, I'm the one that got the bike racks on the buses and know that when you're on the bicycle or on the bus, when you get off, you're a pedestrian. So it is something that is important to me. See you in a little bit, because I also put one in for 20. Thank you, Blue. Appreciate it. Thank you for being here today. And we missed one, uh, Mr. Jeff Caldwell. It's uh, when you sp fill out a speaker slip like that, just letting you know, it's hard to keep track. Okay, so I'm trying to. All right. Chair, thank you very much. Yep. Um, the only reason why, I'd, I actually was going to fill out a form for each one, but unfortunately there weren't enough papers. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so uh, I just decided to put it all on one. And I completely understand it, uh, you know, it doesn't look good and it's hard to follow. Okay. So um, <clears throat> I don't really have very much to say. So I, I do greatly appreciate uh, your feedback on that. Um, but this... I, I will point out, you cut off saying the whole agenda item. The whole agenda item is agreement with the Regional Transport Authority for Travel Reduction Program Services, and this is with MAG Expansion. So I know that you don't have the ability to change this at the current moment because it's based off of a court case from 1989 at state statute. However, I highly recommend that uh, Maricopa County uses their lobbyist to lobby the state to change the statute um, and then to also push forward to somehow communicate with the Supreme Court to overturn that court ruling. And so I know you can't change anything today, but that is my request because if we take more cars off or attempt to make take more cars off the street, it is going to create more congestion and more pollution because people are going to idle. They're not going to take up public transit, unfortunately. That's what we're seeing across the country. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, appreciate it. I'll give you this one back again. Okay. Okay, that's uh, it for the three speakers on this item. Um, so the board will now consider item number 19. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item number 19. Thank you, Jack. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Steve. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Okay, uh, now we're getting to item number 20, which we knew would be a big one. Uh, so... Uh, thank you for get, letting the other uh, items in front of them be heard. So we're going here with us uh, for a little bit. Zach Shera is, works in our elections department uh, under the county manager. I'm also going to bring up Mr. Tom Liddy, um, who works for the Maricopa County uh, Attorney's Office. And 
helps us dive into statutes uh, and uh, requirements of this board and when in relation to being under under our statutes we the Maricopa County is a subdivision of state government uh, and we have a lot of questions at times uh, when it comes to uh, setting policies like this we want to make sure that we stay under those the statutory requirements given to us by the state legislature so this item uh, was continued from the September 13th, 2023 meeting. Um, I would like to uh, go ahead and I think it's probably appropriate, just a, just a, a quick um, dissertation, I guess, Mr. Sheriff, of why we're, why we're here today and what, uh, what the elections department is bringing forward to our board to consider. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Supervisors. We also have Elections Director Scott Jarrett on the phone if any questions get too detailed. Um, today we are addressing the policy that was continued from the last board meeting. Uh, it's a policy that will formalize the PC vacancy and appointment process that's newly under the Board of Supervisors purview. Uh, the policy is designed to improve transparency and accountability over this process and provide the board with the confidence to know exactly what they are voting on. Some of the new changes um, since the last form formal board meeting is to update the policy to include a section for the chairman of each of the political parties to sign a statement attesting that they followed their own bylaws. Um, and this new policy will, in that regard, help improve transparency and accountability over that process. With that, I can take any questions or further go into the policy. Um, and you say, uh, Mr. Jarrett, are you, are you on the phone? Mr. Chairman, uh, I am here. Can, can oh, you hear me? Oh, good. Great. Thanks for joining us today as well. Uh, so I believe, um, I'd let, let's go ahead and, um, let's go ahead and hear some comments first, um, because there's quite a few of you that were here. Uh, for uh, the September 13th meeting, and I think that you are getting to see uh, how we are setting up policy in the light of day over over what two different uh, over two different formal board meetings uh, to be transparent, open. Here you are. Here you are. This is a ministerial possibility that we chose not to. We wanted to make sure that we had PC input. Um, and so this is why we are all here to get together today in the bright lights so we can hear your concerns instead of just doing something ministerially, which, which we could do. Um, this is just a policy uh, that we are, are trying to come up with. Uh, so um, I will go ahead and take because there are, there might be some questions in here uh, when you are bringing them up, knowing that I have uh, the elections department here, the board is here, as well as the uh, county attorney's office. So we can maybe hear some statements, hear some questions, be able to write them down, see if we can answer uh, them to the best of our ability, okay? So I'm going to go with the speaker slips exactly how they were handed to me, all right? Okay. Um, you do have two minutes, and I would uh, like, no. there is no, uh, again, there's no reason for outbursts. We're here to hear you, okay? We understand that there are people here that would like to support or be against. We understand that. That's probably going to come out with the comments. We can hear that, okay? So, um, I'll start off with Linda Milliori, LD29 Chairman. Linda, thank you for joining us today. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, so, so we can keep going. Uh, I'd like to queue up uh, Ken Berger, excuse me, uh, Craig Berland, and Timothy Stewart. If you can form a line here so we can move, because I am going to hold you, I am going to hold you to two minutes. You please make your comments with that in mind so we can get through. There's a lot of people that would like to speak to us today, okay? So, Ms. Milliori, nice seeing you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. My argument against what you're proposing is that the LD chairman is also a PC 
and so are precinct captains, or PCs. Previously, they are on the form, and if we have a precinct captain, they should have the ability and the right to sign off on anyone that we submit to our chair, our county chair. I have no problem with Chairman Berlin submitting applications for PCs if we have not appointed somebody. I am opposed to using the DocuSign format, which we have not approved at the EGC. We only approve spending $500. I know that you're looking at statue and saying that you only need the PC and the chairman to sign, but that's a minimum requirement. I don't understand why we can't keep the first form that had the precinct committeeman sign, the captain in the precinct sign, the chairman of the LD, as well as Chairman Berlin. We are building armies in each of the LDs to go out and walk, to talk to voters, and to have them understand what our positions are on who's running, the bonds, people for the school boards, and I think it's only fair that when we're build, we have to work with that army, we should have the right to approve them first. Other than that, I have no problem with Chairman Berlin submitting people if I haven't submitted somebody to him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Okay. I'm trying to keep all this stuff separate. Make sure. Um, two minutes. Now, Mr. Berger. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for the opportunity, members of the board. My name is Ken Berger. I'm a Legislative District 10 Chairman in East Mesa. And my issue is this. Um, all summer long, I have an outreach team and a team of uh, precinct committee men that are out there recruiting and trying to grow our party and, and organize uh, things to become precinct committee men. And in that process, we're, they're filling out the application, we're looking at them, we're, we're bouncing them off of the GOP data center like we're supposed to, making sure everything's correct, submitting them to the county. These applications are being held for certain reasons at the county level. And certain, uh, to my understanding, some of those reasonings don't really um, back up, you know, the process of going through with the Republicans, such as uh, missing an election cycle. They won't process the application because either missing an election cycle or they had a Democrat in their family two years ago. Uh, different various reasons other than that Republican has the right to become a precinct committeeman. And I have examples here today I have all the backing behind that from the GOP data center, matches the address, they are Republicans. Now, the county does have a vetting process, and I'm not against that process. It may one or, maybe one or two may have gotten through the system, but the majority um, were, were disenfranchising Republicans. It's their right to become a precinct committeeman. And I'll give you an example of holding on to applications. My very first one application was from a precinct called Strata. The only rate one uh, precinct committeeman in that precinct, we finally found one in April, but uh, we sent that through and it's been held. They just submitted it to the Board of Supervisors August the 25th. And I've asked three times for it to go through the system. So I'm not understanding why we're holding on to applications. Even through the vetting problem they have, we need to get these through the system. I like to get these approved. Thank, thank you very much. I appreciate it uh, for you being here today. Uh, Mr. Craig Berland. And before, you, before your clock starts running, let me bring up, let me bring up three more. Um, Timothy Schwartz, Mark Beach, and Carol Ayot. Ayot. Well, thank you for spelling it out for me. So thank you. If you could, you three could free up again, that's uh, Mr. Schwartz, Mr. Beach, and Ms. Ayet. Thank you. Mr. Berlin, thank you for joining us today. Chairman, Supervisor, my name is Craig Berlin. I'm the chairman of the Maricopa County Republican Committee. And I was watching your meeting last week when I was out of town, and I realized that you asked for me to appear, and so I thought I would today and add some facts to what was missing from last time. As of September 29th, Maricopa County Republicans have 1,233 unique applications submitted. 961 of those have been submitted to the Board of Supervisors for recording. 62 are in signature process, 91 of those 
applications have been withdrawn by the applicant. I received a PC appointment complaint list um, from some people that are not happy with the performance. And I, I think this is a, a millennial thing that happens every year, uh, complaining about the chairman not getting the applications in quick enough and you guys getting them recorded quick enough. But on that list, there were 140 applications. Seven of those applicants withdrew their application. 14 had bad addresses. 22 have been submitted. Five, the LD chairs was withholding the application for no reason, and so it was submitted to you for approval. 32, uh, I have no record of the ever being submitted to the county for um, record, and um, some have uh, the precincts full, waiting on the RG LD chair input. Um, not registered as a Republican seems to be a pretty popular one. Uh, 17, there's no LD chair signature uh, was a complaint and when in fact the LD chair did sign it and I have the dates. The only thing that I ask is, I'm, I'm not gonna express a, a, an opinion strongly for or against the proposal. Okay, then I'm, I'm gonna have to. But I will ask you is to please process the applicants that you have in front of you. I'm an, thank you for Sorry joining for us today. Sorry for taking a little extra time. Yep. Uh, Mr. Timothy Schwartz. Good morning, Timothy morning. Schwartz. Uh, two weeks ago, I stood at this mic with complaints. I was a little disturbed. I want to tell you today, I'm very much encouraged. I found out this morning that we are going to follow the bylaws, and that is grateful for that decision. Uh, uh, and I know not everybody's heard that, I've heard that. I'm also encouraged that when push comes to shove, the county bylaws supersede the legislative district bylaws because not all LD chairs, we all wanna do things our own way. And so as long as we've got a system in place that abides by the rules, I'm encouraged by that. I'm also encouraged by your statements two weeks ago, Mr. Hickman, that, that said, you know what? There are certain things that are in our purview to change, but there are certain things that are not. And some of these things that you're wanting to get changed, you gotta actually go to the legislature and change in statute to make them law. That makes me very happy. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Schwartz. I think this board's been very clear that we uh, are gonna honor bylaws of, uh, of all three of the uh, parties um, because basically we do follow statutes. So, um, Mark Beach. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. This is easily the probably only meeting this year I'll attend where I need to hydrate or prehydrate. Um, <laughs> Yeah. I am the first vice chairman of Legislative District 2, and uh, our current board has been in place for uh, almost a year, and we've had no issues with the current process. Um, I would hate to think that the board of supervisors was unlimited, uh, I'm sorry, unwittingly duped into getting involved in an intra-party squabble. Um, so I, you know, I would, encourage you to look at the arguments that are being made. It's the same tactic that's used by authoritarian types to gain control over things like the First and Second Amendment. Run fast and far from this uh, getting involved because remember, the process is working, so if you break it, you own it. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. No outburst, please. Okay, Miss Ayat. thanks for joining us today. Uh, before you start speaking, let's do, uh, th let's form up three more. Margaret Fernandez, Frank Rizzo, and Donna Gutkowski. So, um, Madam Clerk, before you start speaking, are, were these handed to me in alphabetical order? Did you do that? Because it's starting to seem like it. No, I just okay. handed them. As you were receiving them, okay. Just want to make sure 
that uh, what I said is it's exactly pans out. So, Ms. Ayat, thank you for joining us today. You're, wel you're welcome. Good morning. My name is Carol Ayat. I'm the chairman of Legislative District 27, and I'm both a precinct committeeman and a state committeeman. It's my understanding that people's party affiliations have changed and they were removed as a PC, but that person did not file to change their party registration. We've also seen people re-registered in another county without moving to another county. We need to get to the root cause of why PC's party affiliation is changing and why people are being re-registered to vote in another county without the voter requesting to do so. This is not a PC issue, this is a voter role issue. In reviewing the voter data for LD27, there are about 5,000 voters who were previously registered as Republicans that are now registered as P&Ds. The changing of voter registration seems to happen after the voter visits the Motor Vehicle Division or uses Service Arizona for a reason not related to changing their voter status. The Elections Department needs to resolve why voters' party affiliations are changing and why voters are being re-registered in another county without vo the voters making the request. Requesting the government to get involved in a club's private business is never a good idea, and it goes against the Republican Party platform of less government. I'm requesting the Elections Department to fix the root cause issues and not to add more government bureaucracy to the PC appointment and removal process. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, no, oh, no outbursts. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, Zach, did you hear something that you want to provide an answer for? Yeah, Mr. Chairman and Supervisors, and I think maybe Mr. Jarrett could also expand a little bit on this. Um, the MVD process and Service Arizona process does, when you re-register a vehicle, uh, have an opt-out portion. Um, and so sometimes that box is, is mistracked, and then that can change the, the individual's party registration, unknowing to them. So that's not, an, that's not something that the Board of Supervisors or Maricopa County has any purview over. Let's, but, um, let's I don't know, stop. Scott, if there's anything else there that you want to add. Let's stop. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Jarrett, did you have anything to say about that? Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Sashera uh, said that perfectly. And also I would just say that the voter registration rules are under the purview of the Maricopa County Recorder's Office, but the Service Arizona and the MBD process is allowed for um, in statute. And so that currently opt out portion of it um, is following current laws. Okay. Okay, we're just, everyone, we're providing information. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and restart uh, the, the conversation then. Uh, I believe Ms. Fernandez, I think you're next up. Ms. Fernandez, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for allowing me to speak. You bet. Thank you for allowing me to speak, and I reassign my time to Ms. Patty Porter. Okay, Ms. Porter. Thank you. Thank you very much for um, hearing the will of the people this morning. My name is Patty Porter. I'm first vice chair of Legislative District 12 on behalf of our chairman, Greg Dutton. Attendance at the mandatory MCRC meetings in January and district meetings throughout the year are important metrics to tell us how active a member is. This helps us to determine how many are paper PCs and highlights the needs for district chairs to reach out to those PCs to find out if they wish to remain active or if they've moved. I'm proud to report that LD12 is number one in attendance at the MCRC statutory meeting in January with 86% of our precinct committeemen represented and at the AZ GOP statutory meeting we were 100% represented by the state committeemen. Other LDs may have a higher percentage of positions filled, however, as in the case of LD4, only 58% of, of their members represented at the MCRC statutory meeting, including their proxies. When a district chair determines there is sufficient evidence to prove that a PC has stopped attending meetings, has become non-responsive or may no longer live in the district, but has not registered. We need a means to remove the PC from our roles. We currently have two options, obtain a signed resignation, ideally, or wait until August for the elections. In cases where a PC has moved out of the district and has become non-responsive, we cannot obtain a signed resignation. In that case, it makes sense that we review all evidence of residency and all attempts to connect, contact that person. And with input from the PCs in that precinct, we should be able to submit a request to the county chair to approve a vacancy. Furthermore, we must be able to make these decisions ourselves with no interference from the Board of Supervisors, any government attorneys, or the AZGOP. County chairs of each party, per the current statute, should be able to handle requests to remove PCs from the respective committees. This is our committee, and we can handle it on our own. 
Okay, thanks, Ms. Porter, for no, no outbursts. Let's keep moving. All right, uh, Mr. Frank Rizzo. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, thank you for the opportunity. You bet. I want to um, reiterate what uh, Linda Migliori had, say, had to say uh, with one addition, and that is that if um, the, the uh, county chair or Lawrence Hudson does um, deny someone being appointed, I think they should have uh, uh, discussed with us the cause because we are closer to the action than they are and we have either discussed or met with or whatever in that, um, in that line of uh, commitment from the PC to the PC captain to the LD chairman. So I think the discussion has to be made before, <clears throat> before complete denial. And I don't believe that's happening in all cases, but I think it should be. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate you being here today. Okay. Um, Ms. Gutowski? Correct. Thank okay, you. Okay, got it. Thank you. Well, welcome. Um, before you start, uh, let's form up three more. Um, Mr. Keinsler, Elwood Keinsler, Ms. Marissa Hamilton, and Ms. Michelle... Althea or Althea, I'm sorry if I can't make that out, but Mr. Keinsler, Ms. Hamilton, and uh, Ms. Althea. Okay, so Ms. Gutowski, welcome. Good morning, Chairman Hickman and Board of Supervisor members. I'm reading from an email that was sent to you by Mr. K.J. Kukta. He says, you need to vote no on changing precinct committee men vacancies and appointments policy for the following reasons. No, bit, no to big government, limited government does not control private political parties, which is what this is. Two, if you change this policy, you will build a new bureaucracy and the taxpayers will incur this burden. Three, MCO elections department has plenty to focus on with running elections so that what happens in, happened in 2022 doesn't happen again, never again. Four, what happens if there is conflict between how the county operates this policy versus private political party bylaws? This causes ambiguity, confusion, lawfare, and see all of the above reasons. If you proceed to vote yes and change this policy, this will demonstrate that you have too much power. And remediation by voters means Maricopa County needs to be broken into five counties. And I will speak for myself. I would follow Mr. Beach's re recommendation and run far and fast from this pile. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. All right. No, no outbursts. No outbursts. Thank you. Mr. Keinsler. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Elwood Kunzler, and uh, I am a SCPC and uh, first vice chair of LD23. Uh, I'm going to be very short today. On September 13th, you all had a bunch of PCs in here and uh, from LD3, 4, and 14, and uh, the misinformation that they put out was absolutely unbelievable. Craig Berline and the Maricopa County uh, Board has done an excellent job, and they continue to do an excellent job, okay? And I can say this, after following this board carefully throughout election integrity, and the last election, I've got zero faith that you guys should touch anything that has to do with a PC. All right. That's great. I like the waving of hands. I can see the, you, the approval that way. I don't, we don't have to slow down the meeting. So thank you very much, uh, Ms. Marissa Hamilton. Chairman, Supervisors, uh, I am the AZGOP member at large for CD1. 
Um, I, you know, this is a continuing theme, but I disagree with the process that you took to approach this. I appreciate wanting to have transparency uh, and, and consistency in the process, but this should have come from the parties themselves. There should have been a stakeholder meeting with the parties. Uh, the parties should have given you what the process should be, not the other way around. It's concerning that you've taken this approach because um, as I have audited your official ballot uh, precinct reports, they have not been completed. So I would prefer that you would spend the time in this department working on getting those forms completed so we can have proper chain of custody rather than trying to change or influence a process that really you don't have business participating in except to be a rubber stamp. Um, you rubber stamp so many other policies that we disagree with. And yet the one thing that, we, that we've asked you not to meddle in, which is our private party, you then decide that you're going to actually do something different. So that's concerning. I think those priorities are out of order. Um, I ask you instead to please table this process change and approve the pending PCs. You are literally standing in the way of democracy, and I think that's shameful. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> better. Thank you. Okay. Very better. All right. Um, uh, Ms. Althair, thank you for joining us today. Hello, my name is Michelle Altair, Altair, and I'm the chairman of LD23. And I'm going to address the elephant in the room and just call names because, you know, everyone seems to banter about Craig Berlin's name. And I, with the one uh, supervisor who said, who made the statement that I'm the elected official, so what I say goes, that kind of mimics what I heard from the uh, so-called chairman or, or LD chairman or other individuals that spoke at the September 13th meeting. And so I'm going to address this elephant in the room. And I encourage people, you know, I'm, I'm not saying this for your benefit. I'm saying for those who are listening that instead of just listening to what people say, maybe they should get the whole facts. Tatiana Pena expressed a, um, something against her chair, saying her chair is not putting forward ballots. What she failed to say is that she had an injunction of um, against her where uh, her chairman could not have any contact with her. Ergo, she could not talk to her about the applications where a chairman should be able to talk if you're bringing forth applications. I was at an EGC meeting where she did have the cops called on her because saying she's in the same room. So that held up some applications. We have um, the, uh, the individual by the name of Azarni who says that she's the LD chair of three. I personally was on the email chains um, when the previous board was um, in in session or on the previous board where every you know hearing where they did go through the right process to have their elections redone they went through the process i was in possibly the same boat so i was on a phone call with the previous chairman who said just like ld3 ld11 you should postpone your elections because the holidays are coming up. That was the reasoning that was given. It wasn't the fact that they did not, everything was done um, in good order. So we, they did conduct a new election. I was one of the chairmen that voted for that. That was the rest of the story while this person still is able to talk up there. So I would encourage people to do like you do for, for you. elected officials, vet them first. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Okay, hey, good, good. All right. Let's. Uh, any anything thus far from the attorney's office or or the elections department? Can I continue to get through? Thank you. Uh, I will form up uh, Lois Sugar. I believe um, Susan Thomas and Jeff Dewitt. Okay. Lois Sugar, Susan Thomas, Jeff Dewitt. Good morning, Lois Shugar, LD13, PC, and SE. A couple of points, and I'm oh, Shh, obviously please. I need to make them brief. Yeah. First of all, you say that you're going to have a committee, you're going to make a form for a PC application. MCRC does have one, it's a great form. You might want to take a look at that before you take any time or spend any money creating form. If you've not seen this, I have one with me, and I would be glad to leave it with you. The other thing is, Back on August 23rd, there were six Republican PC applications that you had in your control. As of that date, you postponed it until 9-13. 9-13 came around, those PCs have not been approved yet. 
The thing is, you know that we have a ruling that in January, for someone to be able to vote in our meetings, they have to be approved 45 days before. I don't know if this is on purpose, if this is a stall tacket, where you are using this to keep our PCs from being verified so they could vote in our mandatory meeting in January. The other thing that I'm concerned about is the lack of the applicant signature on the PC form. You ask for various pieces of information from both the chair and from the um, applicant, but yet you don't require a signature. We have enough ghost voters on our rolls. We don't need ghost PCs who take up a spot for whatever reason without even knowing that their name and information is being used to do that. And the last thing is, with, when it comes to the removal process because of someone's party being changed, I know you've talked about this, but there needs to be a process where those people don't automatically get told that they cannot be a PC anymore without it being checked out. And we have one in our district that went through that. Thank you thank for, you. Thank you you for like joining us today. The Appreciate MCRC. it. You can leave it with the clerk's office or the county attorney's office. Thank you. Okay, thanks for joining us today. Uh, next up, uh, Ms. Thomas, welcome. Thank you, um, thank you for hearing me today. I appreciate this opportunity. I'm gonna come at this a little differently um, with my experience. I have, I have recruited over 100 PCs in the Valley over the last year um, with, with, a, with a lot of help. Um, along with another PC that works with me, we have uh, over 20 of them in RLD being held up by the Board of Supervisors right now that I really would, one of, one of these ladies came down, took time off from work to sit here this morning, had to go back to work. So these are, these are people that we have talked to. Um, I'm passionate about the appointment process because I was denied the opportunity to be a PC until 2019. And although I have decades of political volunteer experience, going back to Goldwater, I'm really old, um, <laughs> that I, didn't, I never was able to get involved in local politics. And this was due to the policies and the control and exclusion in my LD area against grassroots activists who didn't fit the old guard country club Republican type of process that they wanted. Um, the current process allows PCs to be a much, uh, is much fairer and more representative of the real Republican base. And LG chairs um, cannot become a, a source of tyranny and determination of which PCs are elected to, ultimately elected to office. Most of us come in through the appointment process and ultimately go on to be elected. Um, and and that is, that's important, but it's also, I mean, please do not add more, demo, uh, more bureaucracy to this process. Approve the pending PCs and don't get involved in po the party political apparatus. It's working right now quite well. We've got some hiccups, but there are checks and balances that can work and do work, and, and I appreciate that. So thank you for hearing me today. Thank you. Okay, thanks for joining us. Uh, no, Alpers, you guys are doing great with the hands, I can see. Uh, Mr. Jeff DeWitt, thanks for joining us today, Jeff. Mr. Chairman, Supervisors, thank you very much. Uh, I know this is a hot political topic and I, I really appreciate the time and the energy you guys are putting into uh, trying to get this right. So I am the chairman of the State Republican Party um, and, I, and I thank you for pushing this meeting. I got notice just right before the last one that this was a topic and I wanna make sure we talked about it. So um, the way the, the party system works, we have these elected PCs, over 5,500 of them. For every three precinct committeemen, there's a state committeeman. We have over 1,800 of those. And then they, those 1,800 state committeemen, elect me uh, to this position. So we are a grassroots organization built from the ground up. Uh, my goal is always to push the decision making, push it out to the LDs, and push it to the PCs that drive our organization. So um, as far as the appointment process, we want to be uh, very quick to bring PCs on. We do want to get as many appointed as possible right away, and we don't put a thumb on the scale in that process. That's through the county. Um, but we want to be slow to get them out. You know, sometimes there's too quick of a process, and I deal with this all over the state. I know 20 of our LDs fall in Maricopa County, and you're, I know you're getting good advice from Mr. Lid Mr. Liddy, who I believe back in the day when we were all much younger men was MCRC chairman right here, who's also giving you advice. So the former Craig Berlin sitting uh, up here. Um, <laughs> for many years ago with us. Um, but we, there was a problem in Santa Cruz County, people don't realize very recently, about two months ago, 
where the Santa Cruz County had in their bylaws, if you don't come to three of our meetings, we kick you out, and the LD, and you have here, you have 20 in one county, but Santa Cruz, LD19 covers five counties. And so it's hard for a PC in LD19 to figure out which of those counties do I report to, and so they report to the LD. But one PC got kicked out for not going to the county meetings where she had been dutifully attending the LD19 meetings. And so we wanna make sure there's accuracy in the process and we're not getting rid of good precinct committeemen. And if I can quote uh, just statute real quick on, on that process, just to make sure everyone's clear. Uh, and we're, gonna, we're gonna have the statute read. So. All right, perfect. Just yeah. uh, section E about removal, which is um, they just have to be a voter and, and assist in the duties Jeff, of the I political party. Jeff, I, know. I, I can't let you go long. No, no, no problem. So. But just, we're just hoping for accuracy yeah. and pushing that to the LDs. Appreciate, Thank you, Chairman. Appreciate it, you bet. Thanks, Thanks for joining us today. Okay, um, the next one, next. Next three, uh, let's, Miss Porter, Patty Castillo-Porter, uh, Christina Jungay, I'm murdering names, I'm sorry, or Jung, and uh, I believe, I believe Blue Crawley, okay? Uh, hi, are you hi. ready? Um, let's let let's, uh, everybody form up behind you, and while we're at it, let's have Miss Nancy Wilming also join us at the back of the line. So, Ms. Porter. Hi, I love this representative form of government. I'm up here again. I'm up here now as my formal um, political, I'm a volunteer, but I have two hats I hold. I'm Congress, Congressional District 4 member at large, and I'm also the LD chair, LD 12 vice chair. And I'm here on behalf of my constituents. You know, I, I go door knocking a lot. I have a lot of meet and greets and I'm with the voters. And the voters are very, very unhappy and they're distrustful of the Board of Supervisors to be quite honest because of what they've seen. So removing the PC application process from the current process of being within the LD chair and the LD precinct captains and LD PCs up to the LD or the county chairs removes that layer of trust that we're trying to build. We're currently trying to build trust with our neighbors, our constituents to say, hey, look, things are changing. We've got real grassroots people like me and you that are running for office that are trying to make a change. And when you start inserting more government, bigger bureaucracies, not only are you um, not on for a Republican, we do want a smaller representation of government, but we also want to be in charge. It's we the people, the 10th Amendment gives us that. And we are adamant about that and I am insistent keep the process the way it is. I'm building relationships with my neighbors and my constituents. I oversee, I think CD4 has like 145,000 Republicans and LD12 has about 35,000. So combined, that's a large number of Republicans that I'm speaking on behalf of. And we're saying, leave it alone. We're trying to build our base. The intra-party politics that's happening needs to stay within the party. All of that, it's, it's like a family, right? Families have disgruntled situations that happen. You don't go to the next door neighbor, you fix it within your own home. And that's what needs to happen. The EGC will do that. I think it needs to stay within that. So I'd appreciate that the BOS just stay the heck out of it and leave it the way it is. Thank you. Okay, thank you uh, again. Great. All right, thank you. Uh, very good. Okay, I'm Christina Young. John, okay. I'm an Thank you, LD29 PC. And I think that what we're doing here is everything about control. The government wants to control what we eat, where we go, where we don't go, whether we have a stove or not, whether, you know, what they're going to control now our parties. Where is the independence of the parties? Where is the decision making that they should do it themselves and not with a group of people that we have elected? We elected you, but we don't want you to control that. You don't remember that. Today, where are the people here that were supposed to be here? It's a lack of respect not to be here talking to us so that we can talk to them afterwards. Okay, stop, and I, go ahead, continue on. Okay. There are decisions that you're making, even though most of the people here that are representing everybody here say, no, we don't believe in that. You don't give any kind of an idea or anything. You just say, vote, yes, 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 yes. And you don't take into consideration what you're hearing from the people. The LDs are the people's groups, so that we are representing the people of our areas. 
we don't need anybody to come and control us, people who don't have the best interest to do, be doing so. I really would appreciate it if you leave us alone, let our freedom stand, and let the parties be independent, because without this independence and this freedom, this country is going down the drain. Okay, all right. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Crowley. I don't know about Steve, but myself, I find this to be more fun to watch than it should be. One of the things that I heard at the last meeting was that uh, the uh, legislative district chair said, I don't want any rhinos. And what this is, is trying to decide the direction of your party and how the input of those that are part of it, because I believe other than Steve, all of you have an R in front of your names, and you're also all precinct committeemen. So when I hear them casting aspersions of hate and wretchedness upon your abilities and that, you're a participant in this process. When is the uh, time to get primary petitions? Because that's part of the whole equation, too, that you're having to deal with. And since I see the myopicness of some of your more conservative methods and, and wondering what litmus test do they want to have on you? anybody that wants to be a participant of the party, and if they're not doing it according to them, cast aspersions and send them to hell? I appreciate with what you're trying to do to make your party function better and in your interpersonal relationships with them. I support the changes that you guys are about to do and encourage anybody that is a Republican that wants to be a part of the system, when you're petitioning the system as it is, realize that in, what, uh, July you can start, your, or June you can get a petition out to show the actuality of it and get yourself on the ballot. Okay, thank you, Mr. Crowley. Okay, uh, now Ms. Wilming and before, as before you start speaking, Ms. Wilming, uh, so I'll give you a full two minutes. Uh, Ms. Leslie Shepard, Mr. Tom Hado, and Ms. Veronica Corcoran. And actually, um, we're getting to the last, and then Jeff Caldwell, okay? So if I, I'll read those off again. Ms. Leslie Shepard, Mr. Tom Hado, Ms. Veronica Corcoran, and Mr. Jeff Caldwell. Okay. Mr. Nancy. Chairman, thank you. Welcome. My name is Nancy Welming. I'm a precinct committeeman and state committeeman in LD15. I have something a little more technical to speak on. Uh, the item being discussed is already laid out in the Arizona Revised Statutes, including county precinct committeemen, state committeemen, and vacancies. According to ARS 16-821, item A, each precinct shall choose one of their number as a county precinct committeeman, and further down, it says, the whole number of precinct committeemen of a political party shall constitute the county committee of the party. Item B states, the Board of Supervisors, upon the recommendation of the county chair or the recommendation of a committee designated by the bylaws of the county committee, followed by, if a vacancy exists, the vacancy shall be filled by the Board of Supervisors from a list of names submitted by the county chairman of the appropriate political party. Furthermore, ARS 16-823 states in item A, a political party entitled to representation on the ballot pursuant to section 16-801 or 16-804 may establish a district party committee for any legislative district as prescribed by law. And B, a district party committee established pursuant to subsection A of this selection 
of this section shall consist of the committee precinct men residing in the district or elected and elected pursuant to section 16-821. If the election committee would like to present ideas or changes to ARS, they should go through the proper channels and work with other counties to come up with a uniform standard that would be presented to the state legislature for statute changes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Shepard. Welcome. Hello. Um, I find it interesting that the only real person I've actually heard speak on behalf of this and support it is somebody who, as he said, there's R's next to your name while he's got a D next to his name. I mention that for a reason because really the people that are standing here before you, the majority of them, I am in completely in agreement with Linda. She laid it out perfectly. This is what I see is, an, is a, um, it's kind of like when the uh, Adrian Fontes was the recorder in 2019, and then the, he delegated the position of certifying the elections to the Board of Supervisors. So we're watching how it happens right in front of our face where things get slipped underneath to take control is what's happening. Because not one person that I've heard from the Republican Party, whether there's infighting or not infighting, are in agreement with this. So what we see is interference that's about ready to usurp and happen. Uh, Jeff DeWitt, Jeff DeWitt is the leader of a business, the AZGOP. Jeff DeWitt does not speak on behalf of each one of us up here. Jeff DeWitt actually interfered with our elections by suggesting that it be a, not be a hand count, which is part of the Constitution. So he blatantly disregarded the Constitution, just like you're going to possibly blatantly disregard the Constitution as well if you allow Big Brother to get involved. I'm sure you guys are super kind. I, 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 I study these tapes. I look at more like football games. Oh, you've got so much information on there, Mr. Hickman. You better pull it together with this water issue. But I'm gonna tell you, it says right here in AZ, ARS 16.823, uh, it lets you know, it says that, um, well, actually, I'm gonna jump over here because actually she just spoke about that, but I wanna play this for you. Conversations with the state Republican chairman, Jeff DeWitt. And, the, and he asked me specifically if we could continue this item for two weeks so he has time to understand the new process and to be able to attend the next meeting in person. And he wants to take a further, further look at this well for the state because he is hearing some things uh, from various counties uh, along these same issues. Thank you. you come to a conclusion? Okay, so my point in all that, Jeff DeWitt, uh, yeah, thank he's AZ GOP. Thank you. He is not a legislator. Pre he has no authority Pre she here. Ate it. Thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Uh, is it Hodo, Hodo or Hodo? It's okay. Hodo. It's, I'm, so I'm, my name's Tom Hodo. Welcome. Uh, horrible, you can't hear me? Okay, so my name's Tom Hodo. I'm horrible about speaking in front of people, a little nervous, so give me a break here. But uh, first of all, Pretty much everything I've wanted to say, I'm not gonna sit up here and reiterate everything. I don't know you, you, I don't know anybody here. You guys don't know me. You might be wonderful people with, with the people's interest at heart, but there's a common theme that I've seen through meetings all over. Unfortunately, I come from Washington State. We won't get into that. I'm, I'm a resident here now, it sucks. I fought hard there, but you, you just can't win there. But anyway, so what I've noticed from these meetings is that there's an overwhelming support from the people for something against something like this, right? But then the people that stand up here, they will go against what the people are telling them they want. I understand that you're the one in power, you're the one in power, you're an elected official, but you represent us. And like I said, sir, I have nothing, Stop. sir, I have nothing against you, nothing against any of you. I'd love to sit down and have dinner with all of you, whatever, I don't care. We all, I hope, are working towards the common good and the common goal of keeping everyone healthy, safe, all that kind of stuff. But our country is falling apart because of this, because of this type of thing. We're not listening to we the people. We're listening to bureaucrats and adding more bureaucracy to it. The, the, the I'm not a Republican. I'm a union. I am now. I, I have been since 2016, but I'm a union pipe fitter. I owned a marijuana business in Oklahoma and Washington State. I would be a Democrat. I would definitely be a Democrat, but I see what's going on with this country, and the only option we have is to 
infiltrate, I'm sorry, best word I could say, the Republican Party and turn it into the party, the working party for we the people. And I urge you, please, the people have came and spoken to you and they just want you to listen. That's all I have to say. That is very, enough. Uh, thank you. All right, uh, Ms. Co uh, Corcoran. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. LD, LD business is run by the people, not by LD chair, not by LD board. I'm learning this myself because I become a PC some time ago. And you know, we grow and we become better and that's how we grow Republican party. If you, what I've learned that a lot of our chairs, they don't have a clue that they have to follow the Robert's rules of order, other parliamentary rules, and they act as a ty tyrannical little bu bureaucrats. And people are not informed, including myself, I was not, until we learn and what our rights are, because we have our rights come from God and from Constitution. So I'm looking at you guys and I wonder, are you guys aware that you are endangerment to yourself and us by trying to be a bureaucrat because this is a natural process. Historically, PCs have come to take a trash out of the uh, neighborhoods. We are taking trash out too. Media lies, misinformation. This is something we need you to work with us or Bill Gates, please, Mr. Bill Gates, tell, tell your, your superiority because you try to cry and whine many times because we tell you the truth and you're not happy about it. How about, how about you go to tell your Republican legislators to do their job and stop hiding behind you so we can do our job and do, you do yours and please do not try to follow this Fourth Reich agenda, Nazi Reich agenda with World Economic Forum because guys, you are gonna be hurt. You are endangerment to yourself. Believe me, I've been in a communist country. I've studied in China. I've seen things around the world. Uh, please, please, these people are emotional, rightfully so. Why are we even paying taxes? Our votes have been stolen. Why are we paying taxes when our votes in 60% machines were down? Focus on a All right, hand I know count. that's not relevant. To yeah, fo okay. focus on a hand okay. count. Thank you for joining us today. All right. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Caldwell, and that is the last speaker slip I have. You want to take a, this is what everything you've given me. You take a look at that. Mr. Caldwell. Chair, Supervisors. Um, so we learned today that it's state statute that allows for uh, voters' registrations to be flipped uh, when they re-register, possibly. And so what I am asking for you guys to do is to, instead of just blaming state statute and not taking up the ability to make a difference, you have the chance to implement a policy that would inform a precinct committeeman or LD chair or county chair that their party policy or uh, uh, registration has changed instead of just kicking them off of being a PC. So they are receiving a notification afterward. They need to be pre-informed, hey, your registration's changed, our next meeting is this date. If this is an issue, uh, please let us know. And you know, they don't know. So uh, that's a huge problem. But another problem that uh, is arised is um, Supervisor Gallardo said that he was going to inform the Democrat Party to get them here today. And so we haven't heard any officials from the Democrat Party. And so we are now hearing from one side, in my opinion. Uh, we have a couple people that spoke as individuals. Um, and so we aren't having a total informed decision on this uh, topic. So I highly encourage you to table this. I highly encourage you to bring the parties 
to the table. And um, I also do recommend that if there are any changes within the PC forms or party registrations, the chair of the county, the LD chair, and they are notified. Another issue is, is that there's no signature requirement on the appointee. So we need the signature of the appointee as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Caldwell. And we did have, thank you, uh, we did have it rustled up in there. So thank you, Ms. Cheatham. If you'd like to come up and speak. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, my name is Susan Cheatham. I am a PC. I'm a state committeeman. I am also the treasurer for LD25. And I just want to state that there's no hate here. There's frustration and passion for the truth. And it's our responsibility to hold this board accountable. This, is, this, this revision has been presented to represent a few LD chairs and our AZGOP that want control of the PC process so they can cherry pick who they want and who they don't want. And by taking away the power of our county chair and EGC. I'm just gonna bottom line it. The overall system isn't broke. We don't need to fix it. Thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, I appreciate that's it for the speaker's slips. I wanna thank everybody. There was minimal outbursts and I like the show of hands. So thank you, we were able to get through uh, that and I appreciate your sense of decorum today. So uh, I will turn it over um, uh, to Mr. Shira. Uh, we've been having meetings and making sure of several things uh, that I think is going to speak to the concerns of uh, the majority of this, uh, the group of PCs that have decided to come and take the time and speak with us, give, them, give us their thoughts, okay? So, Mr. Shira. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Supervisors. Um, I do want to quick point out that on the forms, we do ask for the signature of the PC to be appointed or to be removed. So that is on the forms. Um, so that is not the case as some have claimed. Mm -hmm. um, I would also like to point out that this process is not changing the process that the parties have, either party. Um, this process is so the Board of Supervisors can have backup material so that they can then in fact either vote to create a vacancy and then vote to appoint into that vacancy. It's just like any process that we would have for other elected, sorry to determine. The Stop. Everybody, nobody has seen the, <laughs> no one's seen the forms. So Mr. Mis Mr. Uh, <laughs> Attorney Liddy, um, if you could take us through that a little bit. Well, Mr. Chairman, I was just gonna say that the the role of the Board of Supervisors is ministerial and very, very small. And the reason um, that is is because of the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, which provides the free people the right to freely assemble. And that's what a political party is. It's freely assembled people. And no level of government has any role in deciding who's going to freely assemble and who's not. Not the federal government, not the state government, not the county government. That is solely the province of the freely assembled group. In this instance, with these statutes, the recognized political parties, which would be the Republican Party, Libertarian Party, and the Democrat Party. So there's nothing in the process before, or if this policy is adopted after, that's gonna change that. The Board of Supervisors has no role whatsoever in the construction of any political party. Stop. The law in Arizona requires that the Board of Supervisors perform the ministerial role, shall, shall appoint these uh, precinct committeemen that are on the list that comes from the political party. You have no power at all to change any name on that list, none whatsoever. The language of the statute says that you are required to determine if there's a vacancy. And of course that makes sense because you don't wanna switch a precinct committeeman who's a, a member of uh, a representative in one precinct when there's already one there and there's no vacancy. So there's no way that you can perform your duty, ministerial as it is, without determining if in fact there's a vacancy. So if uh, a precinct committeeman moves out of state or switches political party or just resigns and that creates, that's one, that's three different ways to create a vacancy, there are many others. 
and then a name comes up to you, you shall appoint that name, but only if, in fact, there is a, a vacancy. So you can't create any vacancies. You just have to determine whether it's accurate or not, because mistakes are made. We've heard here today that mistakes were made. You've heard from your constituents that mistakes have been made. Mm -hmm. So that's all that's happening here at all. There's no power at all being taken away from any of the political parties. Um, go ahead, Zach. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I just want to point out that this board is the filing officer and the appointing authority for many different offices. So much like if uh, the county attorney had resigned and provided you with a resignation letter, then this board would vote to create that vacancy, vote to determine that vacancy, and then appoint. So this, this these offices, precinct committeemen, is an elected official office, is an elected office, and so you are now just treating it similarly to the other appointed offices that you appoint for. Okay. We were read and went over the statutes. Do you, do you have the statutes where, where what we are trying to accomplish based on uh, we have signed a new uh, agreement with the recorder's office where we have, as a board, have taken over some of the duties uh, when it comes to elections? Um, it, could, you, could you read the statutes? Uh, I don't have that statute. In well, no, that's the uh, that's the uh, agreement uh, signed. But what what are we obligated to look for with with uh, in within the statutes? Sixteen eight twenty one B. The board of supervisors, upon recommendation of the county chairman, or the recommendation of a committee designated by the bylaws of the county committee, for that purpose, shall determine when a vacancy exists in the office of precinct committeeman. That's what we're dealing with. Shall determine if a vacancy exists. So if you get a list of names to fill in vacancies in precinct committeeman from any of the political parties, it's your legal obligation to determine if, in fact, a vacancy exists. Mm -hmm. So, And there have been calls mm -hmm. by your con constituents You've heard right here today from people saying, hey, that's a problem. Sometimes somebody's saying a vacancy exists, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And it might have to do with something to do with motor vehicles. It might have something to do with somebody registering a car in another county. It might have something to do with a, a lack of understanding of the legal requirements to be a precinct committeeman's attendance to an LD meeting or a county meeting. It could be anything. But if it's not clear that there's a vacancy, how do you do your job? And the way to do it is to make sure you meet your obligation to determine if a vacancy actually exists. And so what your staff has done for you is come up with a procedure and a process to ensure that alleged vacancies are in fact vacancies. And that's all that this is. Okay, stop, stop, stop. So we did we did hear that and some of these things that are brought up can only be uh, some of the wants and needs can only be brought up statutorily working with your state legislator uh, but we operate with under the statutes and I want to but also this you all of you PCs have the ability that if you are finding problems with the statutes and how and how things are going you always have the right to go to your legislators and your districts and talk about this um, I will tell you, I, I invited some legislators to understand that there's some problems that exist. I don't know if they want to touch it just yet, but maybe they want to touch it when they're in session and you guys have the ability to go there. But here's what today offers. In the light of day, you got to tell us what your feelings are. But this, is a, this again could have been something in this day and age, something that the Board of Supervisors could do ministerially because we just want to make sure that the name, we just want to make sure that the names that come to this board to be appointed um, go through a procedure that matches up to both state law and your individual club's bylaws, okay? We're not doing anything counter to bylaws or statute, or not. Okay, so um, Mr. Mr. Jarrett, uh, and, I, and I'm, I can't see one of my colleagues, but he's here, but uh, do my colleagues 
have questions for uh, the elections department. We have our elections director on Zoom as well as uh, our attorney's office. Any any questions at this point? Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, Supervisor Gallardo. Thank you. Just a quick clarification I have had in regards to this issue, a, a number of conversations uh, with my side of the aisle, the Democratic Party, even as, as late as last night. I was at a function late last night, and, and I did speak with uh, the, the, uh, one of the chairs of, of the party there as well. Uh, so we've had had discussions. They're very familiar with it. Um, so I don't want to... I don't want anyone to walk away saying that the Democratic Party has not been included or not been involved. I've been involving uh, them in this ongoing discussion around the precinct commitment. They realize the situation that we're placed in. They realize our responsibility and, and, and statutory requirement. And that's what we're focusing on is just that small slither that, that we have a responsibility for. And they do realize that if there are uh, significant changes on how precinct commitment are not only elected, appointed, their responsibility, that does fall on the on the hands of the state legislature. The state legislature, uh, they're the ones that change statute. They're the ones that uh, decide what the policies are going to be, not us. We follow what, what state statute, we're an arm of the state. We follow what state statute is, is, is uh, uh, how it is written out, and, and we get directives by our attorneys on, on how to fulfill our responsibilities, but they do understand this is this is the county's supervisor, small portion of, of the precinct commitment process, and that is what we're attempting to not necessarily change, but to create a policy that is going to kind of outline and provide a platform on how we, we, we move forward. So they do understand that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Uh, I'm not hearing anything from Tom. I'm not seeing uh, Supervisor Gates. So, uh, Mr. Vice Chairman. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and I, I guess I just want to emphasize that <clears throat> we don't look at names of PCs that are presented to us and decide based on anyone's name. When the, piece, when the names come to us, they theoretically have been submitted by the party, by the LD, uh, and have met all the criteria. The whole reason we're going through this discussion is because we got complaints from legislative districts and others that perhaps the vacancies were not properly created. And all we've tried to do is meet with all the leadership and every one of the, the different LDs and the state and say, what can we do to ensure that when these names are presented to us that they are in fact qualified and accurate so that we, we then just meet our obligation of, of approving. Okay. Thank you. Chair. Uh, yes, Supervisor Gates. Thank you. Um, I, I would echo all the, the comments of my colleagues. I don't have any questions. I think that um, uh, Mr. Chair and Mr. Liddy have, have clarified points. I just want to make sure that everyone in the auditorium understands. Look, I'm a former uh, LD chair. I'm the former secretary of the MCRC. I don't want to take power away from the county party, and we're not doing this by what we're considering today. This is not impacting in any way the authority of the LDs, LD chairs, or precinct captains to appoint new PCs. This is simply like the vice chair just said, clarifying to make sure and actually, I think the last speaker, Mr. Caldwell, emphasized this, that if someone is being removed as a PC, we want to be providing them notice. And that's exactly what we're doing under this policy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Zach. Mr. Chairman, I just want to clarify one point. It does state in the policy that we do not require the signature of the appointee in the uh, instance that they are resigning or being removed for the vacancy. And that is because there will be times where individuals remove or, or individuals move, change parties, 
perhaps pass away and we will not be able to obtain a signature in that instance. So it's not because we don't want it, it is on the form. So we, we do want that signature, but in those instances where it's, where it's unavailable, we don't wanna hold up the, uh, the vacancy being created. Mr. Chairman, we don't want dead people signing documents. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Can I? Yes, uh, Mr. Jarrett. Can I provide a clarification? So, but if there is a resignation um, that is submitted up through the county parties, the due diligence that we would then be doing would be then sending a letter to that precinct committee, and so then they would have noticed that they are being considered for removal to create that vacancy in that position. And then I also did want to add, there's one other section to the policy that is addressing um, any changes through the voter registration system. So that would be Service Arizona or MVD, that we are now going to be submitting lists of those individuals that make those uh, voter registration changes that would result in a vacancy being created. Those lists will now then be sent to the county chairs before they are then um, being uh, considered for vacancy. So that is adding, again, more transparency and more accountability to this process. Okay, thank you. Um, you of course, one uh, uh, party chair uh, is here. The state party chair is here from one, uh, from one of uh, the parties. Uh, my question is, uh, Supervisor Gallardo said he's been in contact with um, uh, whoever that might be on the Democratic side at this point. And then I didn't know if we had heard, I know that uh, uh, an item went out, this item and went out to the Libertarian Party. Did we, did we hear anything back from the Libertarian Party about this, about any issues that they would like to bring up? Mr. Chairman, prior to the prior formal um, meeting, um, the policy was distributed to all the county chairs and we did not receive any negative feedback from any of the county chairs uh, about the policy. There were some um, recommendations that we've considered uh, and incorporated into the policy, but no negative feedback from any of the Libertarians, Republicans, or the Democrats. Okay. Remember, we're sitting in the auditorium of all residents here uh, of, this, of this county. Uh, did you want to say something else, Jack, or are you? Well, I, ju I guess I just want to ask Scott, did you just say that no legislative district chair uh, opposed this, this change? No, we said no. Mr. Party. Chairman, Vice Chair Sellers, it was to the county chairs. County chairs. Okay. send it to the legislative district chairs. Okay. Just to the county chairs. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay, um, with that, uh, any other questions? Okay, I wanna also bring up uh, that uh, in the agenda, uh, it was brought up that quite possibly what we were trying to do is create a log jam of uh, PCs. That's, that's, that's not what we're trying to do. I made written statements, common statements, saying that is not the intent of this board. Um, we understand there's important elections coming up for all residents, uh, and we wanna make sure that uh, all of the parties have enough time uh, to elect or appoint anybody that they feel will do work for their respective parties as we are going into an, a new election cycle. Okay, so if you'll notice, um, there, there is an agenda item, um, and I will bring that up, uh, which was item number 78, and, uh, and we'll go in pretty much short order uh, with with that, because we do we do need to break uh, or do the best we can to break the logjam and and start working on that. It is vital that we get PCs in the spots that are open and uh, continue on uh, with this process. So with that, um, we've had a good discussion today, and um, I am going to uh, call uh, for a motion uh, on item number twenty. Mr. Chairman, I move the board approve the precinct committee on vacancies and appointments policy with the revisions to the attached policy. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Do I have a second? 
Mr. Chairman, I would second that motion, but would like to uh, add a comment if possible. Would you like to comment before or after the vote? We can do it uh, either way. Okay. It's up to you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Okay, I do have a motion and a second uh, on item number 20, precinct committee vacancies and appointments policy. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Hearing, aye. hearing none, motion carries. No outbursts, this is a board vote. Okay, this is a board vote. I will, ex I will explain my vote. Okay, I can see. Uh, okay, I am going to. I am going to go ahead and explain my vote. Since we took over this process from the recorder's office with our new agreement, this board felt it needed updating and more transparency than before. My colleagues and I have been contacted by many PCs and LDs about the former PC replacement process. I have met and talked to many LDs and PCs recently about the need to flow the party's own bylaws and the policy will do that. This is a pro-PC policy. It allows staff to better document and facilitate the process. Which, which in turn will increase documentation and most important transparency. This board has been working with the county attorney's office and making sure we are following the law. This policy must follow the state statutes and work with all the political parties. I appreciate and hear the concerns of the PCs and LDs and I hope this new policy, uh, the, the party bylaws will be followed. So, so we will move up, let's, the board will now consider item, oh, I'm going to move item 78 up to do with 21 and 22. You can go ahead and be quiet or file out as we can continue on with our business. Uh, looking, for a ch looking for a motion. Items 21, 22 Excuse and... Me, yeah. I'm sorry, before you move on with this item, I do have a speaker form from Patty Castile-Porter Castile to speak in opposition for item 21. Okay, okay, item 21. Unbelievable, seriously unbelievable. Patty Castile-Porter representing about 145,000 Republicans are gonna be more pissed off than they were in 2022 and 2020. We are a Republican form of government. Go we, ahead. the people, you guys sit here and continue to ignore what the people, you talk about wanting to join the people together. You get in front of TV. Where's that guy that was sitting right over there? Liddy and everybody else. Right we here. had the most secure elections, BS. And you know what? I am talking to people every single day. And what you guys have done by inserting yourselves in a process that with the word shall, many lawyers know shall is not a must. So Mr. don't Chairman, play that game with me. Mr. It is Chairman, a shall and moreover, what needs to happen is I'd like to see that policy. How many days and what is the accountability for somebody on your staff to turn over the research? To my knowledge, I represent six LDs. Not one person has said we misappropriated a seat. We didn't have a vacancy, that has never happened. So the fact that you are going with this directive with no basis, no evidence, tell me how many PCs have been misappropriated? How many? Okay. Is my time up? No, I've got plenty okay. of time. So I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> so what we need, uh, where was the advisory committee that submitted the policy? Mr. Chairman? For this. Uh, wait, wait one second, have, Steve. Let me the, get through. I have Mr. the Chairman, floor. point of I, order. I have the floor. Order. I have the floor. Hold, hold, hold on. Hold on, Steve. One second. She's got 40. She's got yeah, one minute left. Time. One second, and I will take a comment. Please, Thank you. please start. Thank you. So when can the LDs and the representatives of the party have the policies in hand? Are they available online, Mr. Liddy? 
I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. Where are the policies that you wrote that's going to take the power away from the LDs to actually approve PCs? It's very simple. Uh, yeah, it's very simple. There is no such policy. You, you've made an error. They just, vote on. they just voted on new policies and procedures. No, you just asked me a question about a policy that's going to take power away from the PCs, what and is, there is no such policy. The policy that's the that answer, was just voted on. Excuse me, that's that the answer the to your question. They were just voted on. Hey, Where uh, is it at? Thank, thank you. Please, that's the answer please to your give up. Tom? Please give up the microphone. You've had your two minutes. Oh, please. thank you. And yeah, I do want welcome. to see that. Is it going to be on you're the website? You're welcome. I'll be all okay. over this. Please, please sit down. Please sit down. Okay. Heard, heard item. Jack? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board deny items 21, 22, and number 78. 22, 21, and, and I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Okay. Thank you, guys. Everyone that was uh, items um, uh, are free to I'm leave. I'm pointing out that he's holding a bottle would of you, water as he gets up and walks away. He was would you? Yeah. Would you? Would you go ahead, go ahead and stop. Thank you. There's water, there's water fountains on the other side, as you well know. Can you guys, I will ask you one more time so we can continue on with this meeting. Okay, thank you. Under emergency management, 23, IGA with the town of Carefree, under environmental services, 24, Board of Health fee waiver reimbursement. The Chairman. board will now consider items 23 and 24. Excuse me, Chairman, I have a speaker form for item number 23 from Patty Castillo-Porter. <laughs> Please make sure that you are talking about the item uh, that you would like to talk about. Which item is it? 23 or 24? 23. 23. IGA with the town of Carefree. No, it was 22. Is the no, one I 23. Or oh, did I say 23? 23. Right. If, you could, if you could talk about the IGA with the town of Carefree. So what are you guys doing with the town of Carefree and how are you appropriating funds? That's so, your comment? That's okay. part of my comment. So remove no, it from off, office. Of off, <laughs> off, off. What are we doing with those stones? Which... Can you answer that? No? Are you going to use your two minutes? All right, for, all right, so I'm going to read. Removal from office of the person holding the office, including the removal of a board or a This is not member. item number 23. Well, I'm taking my time. This is not, a, you have to be relevant. Yeah. County Attorney's Office. Miranda versus Arizona, you're violating it right now to interrupt her. Mr. <laughs> County Attorney's Office. Comments on agenda items are limited to the topic of the agenda item. If you want to comment on something else, that belongs in the public comment section at the end of the agenda. Okay, we'll be back. <laughs> Thank you, okay. Item number 23 and 20. If there's going to be any outbursts. Yeah, thank Mr. you. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 23 and 20. Thank you, Tom. A motion in a second. You have what? Mr. Caldwell. Here we go. Here's Mr. Caldwell's. Thank you, Mr. Caldwell. Sorry, thank you for, for letting me know you're on that item as well. Chair, thank you for letting me interrupt the motion. I know that that is uh, out of order and uh, to give me the ability to speak. And so, Chairman, Supervisors, I'm very concerned with item 23 because first, I know that it is uh, national security purposes that we don't have access to uh, the policy, the um, emergency policy, um, so that way 
foreign agents and people that um, are trying to attack us don't have access to that secret information. But it does prevent me from having trust that this process does not create bureaucracy um, within an emergency. And so, like in Hawaii, for example, um, there was uh, many hours that went by before emergency um, mechanisms for water were allowed. And so I don't have the thought that that is something that's gonna happen here. However, I fear that the people who are on the ground closest to the crisis may be constrained by this type of um, agenda item. So I don't have all the data, I am only bringing forth my concerns. And if you can look into that to prevent something like that from happening and allow for emergency personnel to handle the situation at best at hand immediately instead of a top-down approach, that's what I would like to see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so did I ask for a motion for 23 and 24 or just 23? Chairman, you have a motion from Supervisor Galvin. On 23, on and, 23 24. and 24? 23 and 24. Okay, I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Second, thank you. Uh, Jack, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under finance, 25. Elections grants funds to recorder grants fund transfer. 26, fund transfer and warrants. 27, budget adjustment under human resources. 28, market ranges. Chairman, I, I have four speaker forms and all would like to speak on item number 25. On item number 25, okay. Bring all 24, or 20, I'm sorry, item 24, bring all four up. Mr. Caldwell first. Uh, let's see. Mr. Peterson, second. Uh, Ms. Carol Steins, third. Carol had to leave. Carol had to leave. Mag meeting. Is that the same mag me meeting you're supposed to be at, Jack? Okay. Uh, so Carol Steins is no longer here. And Ms. Marissa Hamilton. Okay. Mr. Caldwell. I lost my spot, I'm sorry. All right. Oh, okay. Uh, chairman, supervisors, um, I tried to find out where this money was going in the recorder's office, what it was being used for. I don't have that information. I highly encourage you to vote no on this and give us the data because uh, without us knowing um, where this money is going, it does violate ARS 38-431.09. Um, because what that states is Maricopa County is responsible for providing agendas that contain information as is reasonably necessary to inform the public of the matters to be discussed or decided. And so I understand it's a grant, but we need to have transparency in the election process. And without knowing what this money is being used for, we have now given, if you vote yes, over close to or over $5 million to the recorder's office over the last two months. We do know what it was used for the last time, but we don't know what this one's used for. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Mr. Peterson. Addy. As many of you know, I have a little bit of experience working in the elections department and this is just throwing money at failure as it currently stands right now because our elections have been out of whack for a very long time. The first election I worked in Arizona was in 1996 when I was 13 years old for the Kids Vote Arizona run by Helen Purcell. Helen Purcell back then even had a reputation for swaying elections through voter suppression. Eventually she pulled that and the Republicans overlooked it because we were winning from it. And then all of a sudden in, in 2016, when she pulled that crap on Bernie Sanders and the Democrats made her pay, what happens? 
we get Fontes in. Fontes pulls the exact same stunt, but ramps it up even more. And, well, obviously helps a lot of you guys get elected because he realized, oh, I'm not going to be here forever. I don't want to be a recorder forever. I want to be in a bigger, better office. So he already knows about Purcell losing the office, but he still wants to stay on good terms with the Democrats when he ends up getting replaced by Stephen Richer, who, as we all know, here's the setup so far. Purcell built the voter fraud hotline, hot rod, as we all know. I'm sorry, but that no, is I, not I, relevant I, to I, I have my right to speak. And then Fontes put a Hemi in that. And then Stephen Richer is the guy blaming the Ferrari because he doesn't know how to drive. And here I am seeing you guys rewarding failure by okay. throwing five All million right. more dollars at him. You and guys, the only person need, to not have any hand waving stay. the whole time here was a party chair. Notice how the only person nobody waved their hands uh, for was Jeff DeWitt. Come on. C c come on. Listen, you need to stay relevant to the topic. All right? You need to stay relevant to the topic. Okay. Miranda versus Arizona. Miranda. Marissa Hamilton. Thank you, Chairman and Supervisors. Um, I am I, I'm concurring with Jeff's comments, but I want to add more detail to them. Uh, so thank you for the time. Um, the attachment that's on the agenda item for this simply has line items with dollar amounts. Um, it has department codes, fund codes, appropriation unit codes, activity codes, and um, OBJ codes. But it doesn't actually state what's on what, what, it, what that means or what that's for. And I did a little bit of research with the ombudsman's documentation as the guidance on open meeting law. And it says the reason why we have our, our meetings today um, is, is really to make sure that you have the consent of the governed and how you run the meeting. And so I'm concerned with the documentation on this item because it says we have open meeting law to uh, protect the public, to avoid decision making in secret, to promote accountability by encouraging the public officials to act responsive, responsively and responsibly. Uh, it says to maintain the integrity of the government, to have better informed citizenry and build trust, trust between government and the citizenry. And then under uh, what is required under the open meeting law, item two says agendas must contain information reasonably necessary to inform the public of the matters to be discussed or decided. Um, and that's according to ARS 38-431.09. And so I've spoken here before the last time you gave money to Stephen Richer without um, having the necessary documentation. There's still not documentation. So I think that there needs to be something addressed on that. I would like the Maricopa County Attorney's Office to look at that um, because I, I don't want to have to take this any further with complaints on violating open meeting law. Thank you so much. Got it. Okay. So that's at the end of the speaker slips there under uh, so... I, have I read off 25 through 26? Have I? Okay. Uh, the board will now consider items 25 through 28. Move approval. Thank you, Bill. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. I have, great. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Aye. Under Human Services 29, accept grant funds from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services 30 through 37, amend IGA's agreements and contract with City of Scottsdale, Arizona Department of Economic Security, Scottsdale Unified School District, Mesa Unified School District, Town of Gila Bend, City of Scottsdale, Community Bridges, Inc., and Solari. The board will now consider items 29 through 37. Excuse me, Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve uh items 29 through 37. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, that's a motion. I do. I do have a speaker. Yeah. Chairman, Supervisors, we do have a speaker form from Mr. Jeff Caldwell for item number thirty, and I have another speaker form from Luann Savalt for item number thirty-one. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring them up. Mr. Caldwell. Chairman, Supervisors, um, 
this is originally a, a contract with Scottsdale for a investment opportunity. And what it does is it allows for the city of Scottsdale to purchase houses, renovate them, and then rent them out. Currently, the median house price is decreasing at a rate that is equivalent to 2008 and 1970. And so if we renew this contract, Scottsdale is going to uh, continue owning these houses, but as an investment opportunity, if we recognize the current market forces, the value of the houses are going down. So we have an opportunity to sell these houses at the peak and return the investment on, on the investment. And so with that being said, another issue that we have in Maricopa County is lack of houses on the market. If we allow for cities to own houses that can be readily available and bring down the price of homes for that more people can afford them, the city needs to sell. And so I highly encourage you to vote no on this agenda item. Thank you. Thank you. Chairman, if I may, um, I just noticed that Mr. Colwell also has marked items 31, 32, 35, and 36. Do, do you choose to speak on all, all of them? Yes. Come on up. Okay, Chair, Supervisors, thank you for that. Um, so number 31 is to allow for Scottsdale to buy two more homes. And so it reflects my uh, previous statement. However, this statement is different because now the city is going to be purchasing homes at the peak price and will lose value. And so it's not a real investment at this opportunity. Um, we need to make sure that we're making wise investment decisions, but also it takes houses off of the market again. And so, this is another item that I also highly recommend that you vote no on. Thank you. And then there's another speaker for that, 31. Supervisors, members, I'm Luann Savalt. I'm a precinct committeeman in um, LD 13. And 31 also talks about housing for um, homelessness. So the part I would like to mention is I would like for you to make sure that we don't have um, illegal aliens, illegal immigrants um, coming into our homeless facilities because we are taxpayers. We have, it's hard enough to afford the things that we need to provide for our citizens who are legally here. And I have a heart for people that don't have a home, don't get me wrong. But I also have limited, we also are seeing all of our prices going up for housing, for gas, for homes, for cars, um, food. And so we can't continue taking this, this illegal immigration uh, thing into our state. And as you know, um, they're coming in through the border uh, into El Paso, places like Yuma, causing a big strain on all of the local resources. It's just a matter of time before they move up here. So I would like to, to really consider that and put some kind of safeguards in for we the people. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Another speaker? Was it, would this be on another item? That um, Jeff Caldwell for items 35 and 36. Mr. Caldwell. Chair Supervisors, um, I got item 35 and 32 mixed up. So I, I want to just say that for what I stated with the housing is for 35. So I move on to 36. 36. Um, this contract is for temporary emergency shelter services for homeless individuals experiencing homelessness in Maricopa County in an effort to provide them from exposure to COVID-19. Temporary emergency. And this was enacted in either 2020 or 2021. The United Nations in 
May of 2023 stated that the COVID-19 global health emergency is over. And this is for at least $100,000. I believe it makes the contract over four hundred to $600,000. And this would help save the county tax dollars. And so I do highly recommend that we, we do need to provide services for the homeless, but this has expired and we should not vote yes on item 36. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Any more speaker slips? No more for these items, Chairman. Thank you. Okay, so um, did I have a motion yet? You have yeah. a motion from um, Supervisor Galvin. Okay, uh, looking for then a uh, uh, second on items 29 through 37. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Human Services, 38, IGA with the City of Tolleson, 39, IGA with the City of Avondale, <laughs> and as previously stated, uh, I believe that I item 40 has been taken off the agenda? That is correct, that was withdrawn. Very good, okay. Uh, the board will now consider items 38 and 39. Move approval. Thank you, I have a second. Second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Thank you, Steve. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under medical examiner 41, contingency for summer caseload surge. Uh, procurement services 42, outside legal services, public health 43, amend agreement with Vanderbilt University Medical Center. 44, appointments to the Ryan White Planning Council. 45, notice of award for grant funds. 46, IGA with Maricopa County Community College District, 47 through 49, contracts for community health needs assessment. The board Chairman, will... sorry, I have um, a few speaker forms. Mm -hmm. I have one from Mr. Caldwell for items 45, 46, and 47, 48, and 49. Um, Mike Peterson for item number 45. Marissa Hamilton items 45 and 46, and Carol Stein's item number 46. Okay. Mr. Caldwell, I'm gonna have you come up. If you wanna talk about all those items, I'd like you to just say them concurrently while you're standing at the... Chair, supervisors. Would you like to talk about all of the items that, that you have listed? Sure. Restart, thank you. Two minutes, thank so, you. Two minutes each, thank Num you. Number 45 um, deals with the CDC um, coming in to help with our mental health and uh, homelessness. And so the, the issue is with uh, this contract, um, th this is going to allow for the CDC to implement extremely woke ideology when it comes to servicing individuals. They have a policy that states achieving health equity requires valuing everyone equally with focused and ongoing social efforts to address avoidable inequities, historical and conte contemporary injustices, and the elimination of health and healthcare disparities. And so they're going to use history of lineage in judging if people should or should not get assistance. This is absurd. If people have mental health issues, they have mental health issues. They shouldn't have to go through a process to say, well, you know, my history shows that I should get help more than that other person. I, I don't agree with that. Um, and so then we have number 46 is uh, very concerning because this allows for... I'll restart the clock at two minutes. I just... Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So at 46, um, what this does is it allows for um, illegal immigrants abusing the asylum-seeking card uh, to be integrated into our workforce. This agenda item teams up with uh, colleges in Maricopa County, brings people in to the system who are legal citizens 
to then be the middleman for health services for asylum seekers. We need to enhance our security of the border instead of weakening the security of our border. We need to properly vet these people who have claimed to be asylum seekers instead of putting our students who are in college as a, a middleman in this contract. I highly encourage you to vote no on 46. 47, I'm gonna make this one short. 47 through 49 all have the same language. And so what this does is it codifies our Maricopa County's belief that <coughs> social determinants of health, permanent supportive housing with housing first policies, um, providing regular subsidized housing for unlimited period of time to people experiencing homelessness when the head of household is a disabled condition like HIV or mental health or substance use problems. So the people that need help here need drug addiction help and mental health help. And I do recognize that we need to um, provide housing, but we shouldn't have housing first policies. We need to recognize what the number one issue is of the people needing help. And that is the policy that needs to be implemented. But what it also does is it codifies Healthy People 2030 and Public Health 3.0. And this is uh, another Maricopa County health um, belief, which is health equity, um, which is, is, it literally states structural racism and systemic bias. And so what this is going to do is is going to provide a predetermined outcome with these uh, organizations that we're teaming up with to provide Maricopa County with the study. And so if we go in there believing a predetermined notion that there's systemic racism and systemic bias, then we're going to have an outcome that may not accurately reflect society as it is. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Caldwell. Okay. Uh, Next item number 45 in opposition, Mike Peterson. Once again, this money that we're looking at with this issue is coming from the CDC. And with the CDC, it's actually a DEI program in that it is going to be prioritized to the underserved and underdeveloped communities. And what they mean by that in short and simple terms is identity politics. In other words, instead of trying to prevent fatal and non-fatal overdoses across the board on item 45, what they're gonna be doing is they're gonna be focusing their resources on the people that they need the most to vote the way that they need them to. In other words, identity politics. Thank you. Thank you. Marissa Hamilton, item 45 and 46 in opposition. Okay, thank you. Chairman, supervisors, um, I'm here speaking on behalf of myself on item number 45 to start with. Um, I want to just uh, to let you know a little bit of my family background. Um, I've spoke before previously that I'm a survivor of domestic violence, but there's also a long history of substance abuse with many members of my family. Um, and I lost a cousin to a drug overdose a couple of years ago. Um, I've lost other family members, uncles and, and whatnot too. And so this is something that I've dug into significantly. Um, my, uh, I was subject to abuse from um, a former spouse that had drug addiction issues. My, my concern with this is a couple of things. One, um, the... <sighs> One, we should not be allocating resources based on racism, based on racist policies. This is racism. That's what this policy is. The federal government in uh, 1960 started a program called coercive federalism. This type of funding comes from that model. Um, it is where the federal government will hand down uh, funding to local government with hostile strings attached that are, are going to override the will of the people. And it's actually gonna make these programs unsuccessful. My cousin, my cousin was white. My ex-husband was black. Who do, you, who do you help? One of them is dead. The other one keeps abusing women. How are you going to determine who's supposed to get help? 
And so these policies are misguided. They're going to cause people to die, and they're going to cause people to not get the help they need. So I highly recommend that you table this item and take a look at how you're going to implement it and understand that the federal government is not our representatives. Those are bureaucrats that we never elected. We don't know who they are. Um, <clears throat> so I'd, I'd ask you to table this item and take a look at that again. Uh, also, um, on, can I just move on to number 46? Please. Thank you. Two minutes. Um, on item number uh, 46, I'm not sure you're aware of this, but um, the unemployment rate in Maricopa County for citizens has skyrocketed 45% in the last three months. 45%. And so the policy here, I think, is misguided because this is for people that aren't actually citizens. Um, they're asylum seekers for right now, but most of the asylum seekers have been, once they get to court um, a decade later from the incompetence of the Biden administration, are found to have actually been seeking asylum fraudulently. And so while we have a 45% increase in unemployment rate for our citizens, uh, while we had a previous agenda item where the county, while its intention to try to help us, us you know, reduce homelessness is actually increasing the cost of housing for other citizens and creating more homelessness. Um, <clears throat> I think that these government programs are uh, are actually creating more problems and making it harder for, for citizens to be able to afford to live here. And I think that we need to prioritize citizens that are on, an, on unemployment uh, to get them the jobs that they need. Um, we can't have, like, it is, it is insane that we have a 45% increase in unemployment rate in the last three months. And so again, I'd like you to table this item, take a look at your priorities. Citizens should come first. Our veterans should come first. Our seniors should come first. Our, our, our um, aging out foster kids should come first. There's so many other opportunities that we could do to fix this. We shouldn't be prioritizing our resources on a problem the federal government created for us. We should be prioritizing it to be citizens first. So please uh, take these thoughts into consideration. Okay, thank you, President Stop. Thank you. Last speaker form, Chairman, yep. for item number 46 in opposition is Carol Stein. Okay. Oh, she, she had to leave. Okay. She went to the mag. Um, and before I uh, call the question, uh, I believe Supervisor Gallardo had to leave the, the meeting. So... Let that reflect as we continue uh, to vote. Um, I do believe I have a, uh, I'm looking for a motion or second or, okay, I'm just, this keeps mounting up here. Uh, motion, uh, the board will now consider items 41 through 49. Approval. Thank you, Bill. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Jack. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Any, I heard Bill. Any opposed? Everybody. Okay. So, do, am I missing uh, Tom Galvin? Did he? Did he have to? Did he have to jump? Mr. Chairman, I'm here. Oh, okay. I didn't hear you say I. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate it. Um, okay. Moving on. The board will uh, real estate 50 amend lease agreement with SCI Lures Phoenix LLC under transportation 51. Countywide maximum speed limit, 52 through 53, community solutions funding proposals, Riggs Road left turn phasing corridor project, Oakwood Lakes Alma School Road traffic signal project, 54, easement right of way and relocation assistance documents. Chairman, I have a few speaker forms. I have speaker form for item number 51 in support from Marissa Hamilton. Item 51 from Mr. Jeff Caldwell in favor, and Mr. John Kane on item number 52. Okay. Would you like to speak on these items? Yeah. Come on up. If you guys could form a line so we can keep moving. All right. Thank Chair you. Supervisors, thank you very much for looking into our previous comments and sticking with your determination to um, allow for us to move freely in the county. I also want to use this time to let you know that we are coming here in good faith and to let you know that we do support policies that benefit our freedom 
and abilities as individuals to represent ourselves in the best manner possible. Um, but with that being said, I greatly appreciate your time today and I greatly appreciate you uh, putting this on the agenda because it is completely outdated and it is time to move on from the 55. I can't drive 55, come on. <laughs> I mean, I know one of you said that when you saw this agenda item, okay? <laughs> so um, thank you again and uh, I'll see you and call the public. Great, thank you. Ms. Hamilton. Uh, supervisor, uh, I'm sorry, Chairman, Supervisors, um, I want to, I also want to show that we are here in good faith and we want to thank you and congratulate you and encourage you when you do things that are in uh, giving us more freedom. And so I'm excited that after several, attending several meetings here, I can finally say thank you for supporting freedom one time. I'm really excited about it. That's not to disparage the other items, um, but that is, I'm just, I think that this is progress and I'm really excited about it. Um, I, again, I decided, I, I decided to be here today, even though I'm supposed to be in DC meeting with our members of Congress. And so I, um, but I thought it was important. I thought the items on today's agenda were, uh, we're going to change the outcome of the future of Maricopa County. And I think that uh, increasing the speed limit to something that's reasonable, um, or at least not, not having uh, the maximum speed limit be something that no one generally follow, follows will help make our roads safer. I think that it will help reduce congestion. Um, when we, uh, I think we need some additional lanes though, and some other things need to be looked at. But thank you, thank you for doing that. Um, you know, every time we can reject transportation tyranny and expand freedom, it is a win in my book. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. Uh, next. Mr. John Kane. Hello, Mr. Kane. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, I'd like to apologize for the board because I, I made the wrong selection. I should have been 20 instead of this one. Should I wait to the end to the open? Well, we've already voted on item number 20, but yeah, I would wait till the end in public comments and move it, uh, just go ahead and move it to public comment so you can talk about, about item 20. Thanks for being here. Okay. Uh, let's do this again. Okay. Did I, did I call for the question yet? Did I read it off? I think I did, uh, the book, but not for the motion yet. The board will now consider items 50 through 54. I'm sorry. Is that right? That's yes. Correct. Yeah. Item 50 through 54. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 50 through 54. Great. Thank you, Jack. Do I have a second? <laughs> Don't know what that is. Do I have a second? <laughs> Oh, I heard Bill. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under setting, oh, let's see. Okay. Um, under setting of hearings. Well, uh, I see something as a note. So 50, we'll do 55 and 56. Uh, Recession and replacement of paragraphs G and J of Rule 32. 56 is proposed revisions of Rule 360, Rule 370, Rule 371, and Appendix G. So I will take items 55 and 56. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, move Good approval move. of items 55 and 56. Thank you, Jack. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Bill. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries on item number 57. It says that Supervisor Galvin will recuse on item 57. So, uh, Tom? I'm going to, I'm going, I'm hoping he got off. So, Tom, if, uh, if you're off for a little bit, please, uh, please refrain from this vote. Um, Item 57 is planning and zoning setting of hearings. Move approval. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. I'll ask Garth to give a note to Mr. Galvin. Come back.
Tom, you on right now? Mr. Chairman, I'm back. Okay, thank you. We are having some technical difficulties with some feedback. Let me just... Excuse me, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and, and move on then and see if it happens again under transportation 58... 59, patent easement abandonments is listed on the agenda, 60 through 61, road files is listed on the agenda. The board will now consider items 58 through 61. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 58 through 61. Thank you, Tom. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Bill. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under consent agenda, 62, uh, is a 2023 report of special taxing districts, 63 through 65, cancellation of election and approval of appointments. 66, civil penalty appeals for approval. 67, clearing uncollectible tax. 68 through 70, donations. 71, Head Start program report. 72 through 73, duplicate stale dated warrants. 74, minutes. 75, tax abatements. And 76, treasurer's collections and disbursement summary. Excuse me. The board will now consider items 62 through 76. Do I have a motion? I move approval of item 62 through 76. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. I have a motion. Thank you, Bill. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Hearing, hearing none, motion carries. Under the Board of Supervisors Addendum, Transportation 77, Settlement in Maricopa, Maricopa County versus Trang the Guau. I think that's how you say it, sorry, uh, at Al. The board will now consider item 77. Move approval. Thank you. Uh, Jack, do I have a second? Second. Second, great. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Under Board of Supervisors Addendum Elections, 78, oh, we move 78, and we move that up. We've already voted on it. Board of Supervisors Addendum Correctional Health, 79, amend agreement with Taros Health, Inc. Under County Attorney, 80, Settlement and Continental 155 Fund versus Maricopa County. 81, Settlement and Castle Phoenix LLC versus Maricopa County. The board will now consider items 79 through 81. Do you have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Tom. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Jack. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Hearing none, motion carries. Under, before I recess as the Board of Supervisors, I still have a quorum. Uh, Jack, you're missing a meeting. Do you, do you what, what's, what's your pleasure? Yeah. Well, I, uh, let's go ahead and finish this and I'll, and then I'll go. Okay. We will recess as the Board of Supervisors and convene as the Flood Control District Board of Directors under Flood Control District uh, 82 minutes, 83, declare sell excess parcel, 84, on-call quality assurance management and material testing services contract, 85, change order to on-call contract, 86, IGA for Arizona Department of Water Resources. The Board will now consider items 82 through 86. I Items 82 through 86. Thank you, Tom. Second. And second with Jack. Thank you both. Uh, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Okay. Uh, we will adjourn as the Flood Control District Board of Directors and reconvene as the Board of Supervisors. Under, um, what would, what's your pleasure, Jack? It, I, I need to go. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Sellers is stepping off the dais. Tom, I want to make sure that uh, I still have you. Tom Galvin. Mr. Chairman, I'm here. Okay, great. And I see I can see Supervisor Gates. So we will adjourn as the Flood Control District Board of Directors and reconvene as the Board of Supervisors under item number 87 is public comment period. Uh, Madam Clerk, do you have anything to report regarding public comment email responses? Chairman Supervisors, we did receive um, 
several email comments on various agenda items, and all of these um, comments have been shared with all of the board offices. Okay, thank you. We also have several um, requests to speak, mm -hmm. and I will hand these over to you. Okay, um, so before we get started on the public comment, um, I would like uh, the rules of public comment uh, to be read. Yes, Mr. Chair, <clears throat> this is the time set aside for public comment. Pursuant to open meeting law, public comment is a privilege offered at the discretion of the board and it continues at the discretion of the chair. When your name is announced, please come to the podium, state your name and identify the issue that you want to address. You will be given two minutes to speak. A warning signal will sound with 15 seconds remaining on the clock. At that time, please make your concluding remarks. In order to make sure all who have registered have an opportunity to speak, the two minute time period will be strictly enforced. Please try to add information rather than making repetitive comments. Clapping, loud outbursts, or profanity will not be pro permitted. It is important to note that pursuant to the open meeting law, during public comment, the board members will not respond except to specific criticism made, to ask staff to review the matter, or to give direction to place the matter on a future agenda. Also, if the public comment concerns matters in litigation, on the advice of counsel, the board will not respond because the appropriate forum for such matters is in the courts. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you. Okay, um, we'll get started. Uh, Mr. Kevin Maldonado. Hi, my name's Kevin Maldonado. Can, is that working? Uh, thank you for letting me speak. Um, actually, on my way in, I uh, did get into a car accident on the freeway, and that's why I was late and not able to speak. And uh, unfortunately, I'm a little upset due to the fact I watched two weeks ago when I couldn't make it. You guys allowed Dan Farley to walk in late, and we're moving around Tatiana Pena. Do not appreciate that. Um, so I am the treasurer of LD3. I was voted on both boards, elected on both. Um, my issue has to do with, now you, you're asking for an LD chair's signature. Which chair? You're now gonna enter into party politics to figure out which chair, you're gonna get both signatures, one signature. Is the AZ GOP control the PCs or does the Maricopa County? These are questions that you've now just put yourself into because how are you gonna decide which signature is appropriate on that form to vacate? Um, another thing, Jeff DeWitt himself said, bottom up organization. Starts in the bottom, works its way to the top. PCs, it says in the statute, 16821, that it is a county issue, not a state issue. So it's very frustrating to see so much support coming from top down. This is, this is, this is we the people, not, not, this is not China, this is not Venezuela, this is not Cuba. This is we the people. We need to get back to the point where we are aggregating the power of the people. And please pay attention to that because we will be back. Thank you so much for, uh, thank you, and Anna, I think it was, thank you for accommodating. I really do appreciate that. As I accommodated two weeks ago. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, very good. Right. Okay. Mr. John Kane. And uh, behind Mr. Kane, what, it will be William Bretner, Mike Peterson, and Chris Hamlet. If you guys could warm up, I appreciate it. And Mr. Kane, welcome. Yeah, I apologize for pressing the wrong button <laughs> and I'll forego the obligatory beat up the board portion of my thing. Thanks. It's amazing to me after, uh, hello, can you hear me now? Okay, it's amazing to me that in the two weeks that I've seen how like the fog of war has come over the whole thing. And I think we've missed a lot of what's really important, okay? The core problem that you have within an LD is they have no authority to remove a guy or suspend a guy, okay? And I would ask that the Board of Supervisors use their horsepower to help influence the lawmakers, because I'll be going forward with this, okay, to allow that to happen, okay? And because of that, what you see within the, some of the LDs is to hang up 
politicians, you know, whatever. Picture yourself, you have a department store with 10 people each, which is the equivalent of a precinct. And you have some precinct, like in my case, I've got, we've got 10 precincts with only one person in them, and nobody's in them, and nobody's ever been in them, okay? LDs should have the authority to be over strength. They're all under strength totally, but they, they're, they have concentrations like in the city. We go from Tucson to Yuma. What kind of a deal is that in LD23, okay? We've got large expanses of open places, okay? We, could, we have some precincts that are totally full, but we've got people waiting. Well, they don't want to wait forever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. Mr. Mr. Bretner. Good morning, everybody. Um, William Bretner, uh, former district chairman in uh, the old LD19 back in the 90s and uh, LD12, which is Goodyear uh, in uh, the early 2000s. And uh, I'm here to encourage the Board of Supervisors to do a much better job on election integrity in 2024. Um, I think, uh, in fact, to, to Mr. Hickman and Mr. Gates, I was on the EGC when you were fledgling candidates who came to the EGC asking for your support, for their support, and you urged us that you were very conservative and I've been very disappointed in, in the performance thus far. I hope that you could have a better showing in 2024. We can't have another 2020 or 2022 again. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Okay. Mr. Peterson. Once again, I'm bringing up the, elect the, the matter of election integrity. We're all tired and broken and we keep seeing the repetition of the same mistakes being made over and over and scaled up. And we're being nice about it. We tried being angry about it. We tried revoting. And we're just looking at it like we no longer have any power in our own lives because we no longer have any power in our government. Because at the end of the day, the people that are supposed to be overseeing these elections all have a fall guy to pass it to. They all have an underling to dump it to. They all can say, well, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. And it goes for you as well. Everyone has somebody that they can pass it on to. And I can honestly say that I wish Thomas Galvin was in here because I am really looking forward to Michelle Ugenti Rita putting him out of a job next cycle. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, here we go, Chris Hamlet. My name is Chris Hamlet. Um, I'm a PC and SC in the Southeast Zone Chairman, <clears throat> excuse me, for LD9 and 82nd Airborne Veteran. Um, I just wanna talk about what's happened the last couple of meetings. It, it, it was clear to me that you were gonna make the decision to get involved when you shouldn't have. We the people spoke, you still don't listen. You've been doing this for years, so I, I didn't expect anything different today. Um, you held up this entire thing to get the most insignificant input, for, which is from Jeff DeWitt. He's the AZ G GOP chair. He has zero to do with the MCRC. Um, and if you get the 10,000 foot view and look at it, it looks like an establishment rhino play, the whole thing. So Dan Farley walks in last time. You, didn't, you, you said at the beginning of this meeting you ran out of time last time, but you had just enough to let the establishment rhino extraordinaire come in and do what he had to do. And then when Tatiana Pena gets up, she comes up here and she, to her credit, and I hate giving her credit, but to her credit, she actually told you she was not representing Craig and that was the slot that you gave her. You, your next word should have been sit down, period, end of story. But you let all the players come in that you want to come in. You let them all create this narrative. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I have to look at, look at my stuff here. I can barely see right now. From the last meeting, to today and all meetings in between, you have just shown 
that you're just here to rubber stamp. You're not here to take care of any business for the we the people. And I wanted to say one thing. I want to end on this. This is a Christian nation, okay, as, 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 you know, as evidence in our Declaration of Independence. This is a Christian nation. This is not an Islamic nation. If I was to go to Afghan right now, Afghanistan right now, and I was to say a prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, I imagine I wouldn't make it out of the room. How dare you guys desecrate this institution by bringing in a foreigner to pray in her language to a pagan god. God. Start bringing in men and women of God to say the prayer in the opening prayer. Thank you. God bless. Okay. No uppers. Thanks, though. All right. We'll form up a new line. Uh, Mr. Kinsler, Kensler, sorry. Uh, Ms. Hamilton, Mr. Canterbury, and Ms. Leslie Shepard. Go four. Welcome. Hi, Butch Kunstler's back again. Uh, I have some affidavits here I'd like to hand to the clerk. Okay. Hopefully she will distribute them to the supervisors. I don't know if you take them. I don't know if you read them. I doubt it. Um, uh, but uh, I, I want to follow up on my earlier comments. Last, uh, the last meeting on the 13th, you had uh, Ms. Sarney in here. Uh, and introduced her, and she came to the microphone and introduced herself as the LD3 chair. She's not the LD3 chair. The LD3 chair is Mr. Bob Gomez. So I don't know how you got that confused, but that's the way it is. And then uh, uh, Dan Farley came in, uh, and you showed him some courtesy, as you do other people. That's okay. I have no problem with that. Uh, Dan Farley came to the microphone. Um, and spoke, but never or, or failed to mention uh, that he walked into an LD meeting and assaulted a PC, and the police had to be called. That that information somehow slipped somebody's mind. Okay, and then uh, uh, LD uh, 14, Andrew, you introduced him. He came to the microphone. Somewhere the information got lost that he's a drug dealer and he has a record. Now I don't know how these people. Uh, uh, compiled so much influence over the board on the, on the 13th, and the rest of us had to come back today, okay, to counter all the lies that they told, all right? And when you make that statement, Mr. Hickman, at every meeting that you listen, I agree, you do listen, but you never act in favor of the people. And Mr. Kine, so I will point out that uh, to the meeting, I pointed out that you didn't, you weren't able to stay all the way till the end of the public comment period. I call it. so just just to let you know, I, I did that. You, it's public comment period. I'm sorry I didn't get to you in the public comment period two weeks ago. Oh, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So, Ms. Marissa Hamilton. Uh, chairman, supervisors, is this on? Okay. Um, so I, there's a few items I wanted to talk about. One, I brought my cup of water here so you could see that this is the size of cup of water that when you go to a doctor's office, they ask you to pee in the cup. This is not a sufficient size of a cup of water for us to be able to make it through the meeting. I've had to go back and forth many times. So if you're going to permit paper cups over plastic bottles, can we be permitted to have large paper cups so that we don't have to go back and forth? Um, that that's a request I have to try to meet in the middle of the peasantry status. I know you don't like that word, but I'm going to keep using it. Um, <clears throat> a second thing I wanted to talk about, sorry, is um, <clears throat> I, previously I spoke about ARS 13-3553. This is uh, where it is illegal for uh, people to distribute um, sexually explicit materials to minors. Um, since the county attorney is here, I would like the I'd request the county attorney to look into this because you are also the library board. And I've now found that there's um, many books, one gender queer that I spoke about last time. The author is now on the record saying that this book wasn't made for kids, but you have it in the library section for the kids. I personally don't think our library should have any porn books in it, but especially child porn books that the author said shouldn't be there. There's also the books, It's Perfectly Normal, uh, Dancing in My Nutty Pants, 
which encourages kids to be uh, naked and sexual with each other. There's a book called Tell Me, Making a Baby. There's another book called It's So Amazing. These books are graphic, graphic, that you would not allow me to speak the words here before you. So I'd ask the county attorney to please look into this, protect our kids. I know our county attorney has done a lot to protect kids, but not in our, not in our libraries. Uh, real fast, uh, the recorder's office should add a notification to voter registration changes now that you know that they're being changed without consent to the voters. Uh, public comment rules aren't published. We'd like to see some consistency in a published public comment rule. And MAG isn't a legitimate level of government. We shouldn't be, you shouldn't be uh, working your schedule around them. They should, hey, just you. one, 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 no, to close the sentence out. Two minutes. They shouldn't be working, they shouldn't be changing, you shouldn't be changing your schedule for them. They should change their schedule for you. You have consent to the governed, they don't. Thank you okay. for the latitude. Thank you very much, Mr. Canterbury. Thank you. Chair, board, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Name's Robert Canterbury. I'm a candidate for Maricopa County Board of Supervisors in District 4. Voting is, a mo is the single most important thing that we as Americans can do in our lifetimes. According to official Maricopa County website, the Board of Supervisors brought in Dominion in 2019 due to our ever-growing population. The two elections since then has been drowned in conspiracy and controversy. Neither one of those needs facts to be effective as long as they cause the people to lose faith and trust in a particular system. It is the job of this board and the county recorder to put the fears and concerns to rest that our elections aren't fraudulent and you continue to fail in that duty. Out of the 75 most populated counties in America, 37 use ESS to count their election ballots, including all other 14 counties in Arizona, with very little error or controversy, proving there's a much better alternative than Dominion. My question to the board, has there been any communication with ESS to come in and take over our county elections, or are you pleased that about 40% of the citizens of Maricopa County don't have much don't have much faith in our elections or who may not vote at all. And with the, with the water cup issues, I worked as a county inspector for the judicial courts and the courthouses right here. Courtrooms, people are allowed to bring water bottles, their insulated cups, their steel cups with no security in those courtrooms. But you have, in all due respect, you have all these Maricopa County security uh, services, security officers here who are heavily armed. But if, so if, if security is a concern about water cups, you're putting your concerns in the wrong place. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Leslie Shepard. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm assuming you've got your document that I handed over and I'm assuming the lady lawyer over there has the document that I handed in. Okay, so here we have the Arizona Constitution, Article 2, Section 1, a frequent reoccurrence of fundamental principles is essential to the security of individuals and the perpetuity of free government. When you tell us that we're supposed to get up here and not repeat things, back off. You're breaking the Constitution. Right here, it says, Arizona Constitution, Article 2, Section uh, Section 2, political power is inherent in the people. And if you keep going down, it's, you've got your copy there. It's highlighted in dark. It said, established to protect and maintain individual rights. The minute you take away our personal property coming in here, you're now in violation of Arizona Article 2, Section 4, due process of law. No person, that means you, Mr. Hickman, May be, may be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process. I'm very thirsty. The mm. fact that you tell me that I can't bring in my own water, you are violating my, my rights. Down here, it says in Arizona, Article 2, Section 13, equal privileges and immunity. No law should be enacted granting to any citizen class of, of 
citizens or a corporation other than municipal privileges or immunities, which upon the same terms shall not equally belong to all citizens. When I stood here last time talking to you about this, you had a county worker with his metal mug drinking. He drank through, he drank through several, several people. We saw the gentleman up here getting to come in with his bottles of water. This is not about safety. This is about your control issues. You are both in violation of the Constitution. On the back side of your page, please look at that. This right here is what happens to people who are part of treason. It's called Gitmo. If you cannot follow the Constitution, You're done. you have a yeah, fate in Two store minutes. for you. Two minutes. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. And see the bottle? I didn't throw it at you. Right. <laughs> you're just being Sit down. arrogant. Sit and you're down. being rude. And I'll... you're taking advantage of your position. Thank and we're not you. tolerating Sit it anymore. Down. And you tell your, your Mr. Isherman later. to respond to my emails and give Get me the your policies. Clicks later. Sit down. Two minutes. So I'm trying to get through everybody who's come here today. Oh, goodness. Nancy Wilming, if you could come up. Susan Ellsworth, Sarah O'Neill, and Veronica Corcoran. I'm a dog lover. I have lots of rusty animals. They should have come before people. All right. Miss... Yeah, Miss Wilming. Thank you. I'm Nancy Wilming. I'm a resident of Maricopa County. In light of the recent criminal... How much closer do I need to be? Can anybody can hear. hear me? Go ahead. <sighs> Give it a try. Okay. We have allowed the foundation of our free and fair election process to be torn apart through actions of ill-informed legislators and attorneys such as Mark Elias and others. The first step in voting in the, is the registration process. Surprisingly, this process is not controlled by our county clerks, but outsourced by a third party called ERIC, Election Registration Information Center. They currently provide service to 25 states equivalent to 60 million voters. In 2020, they provided service to, to 37 states. The ERIC board members include the 25 state elections representatives, such as Colleen Connor of Arizona. However, ERIC only has a total of staff of three. Yes, three, because they in turn outsource the other unknown third party contractors. In addition, several Local Arizona PACs have access to directly uploaded unverified registrations via their dedicated URLs into the registration systems. Ironically, 100% of these PACs strongly lean Democrat based on their mission statements. Also automated registration interface with other state data systems such as AZMVD, known as Motor Voter has created inaccurate registration updates to eligible active voters. When these voters appear on election day to vote, their ERIC record indicated they were ineligible or inactive, but in fact, they were not either. Having elections take place in the local precinct level would eliminate the need for ERIC, save money, and give control and accountability back to the county clerks and precincts where it belongs. Thank, Thank you for coming today. All right, uh, Susan Ellsworth. I'm sorry, Miss Ellsworth, I thought you heard my name. Uh, Sarah O'Neill, and then I'll, I'll let her form up behind you. Miss O'Neill. Yes, hi, uh, my name is Sarah O'Neill. I'm a resident of Maricopa County. And um, as you all either know or should know, Smartmatic is an operating system contained in all election related machines, regardless of the manufacturing brand. It's much the same as DOS or Microsoft on all computers. Without an operating system, equipment would not know what to do once the power was turned on. With the recent criminal referral of Smartmatic by the DOJ, the topic of election equipment, including tabulators, scanners, printers, e-poll books, et cetera, is at the forefront of the minds of all voters concerned with free and fair elections and the compromised Arizona election process that continues to be revealed. I, 
Um, I'm sure everyone on the board and in the room are old enough to remember that the Democrats outcry across the nation regarding the 2016 election results. They shouted from the mountaintops, the machines are manipulated, they were hacked, they were compromised. Um, on that rare occasion, I actually agreed with them. But this is not a Republican or a Democrat issue. It's an American constitu constitutional issue. The original justification for implementing voting equipment versus pre-printed hand-counted ballots at the precinct level was that it would speed up the process. Well, that was a myth. Here we are many weeks without results. And when results are published, they often belie common sense, such as the unprecedented vote total of Kimberly Yee exceeding that of all other candidates of any office, including the top of the ticket governor race. <clears throat> the equipment also produced the new version of the hanging chad. It's now known as fit to page print. That was a programmed error that would never happen with pre-printed ballots hand-counted at the precinct level. If voting equipment continues to be utilized, all election officials would be knowingly and intentionally compromising the integrity of elections conducted in Maricopa County, along with risking their bonds. I strongly urge all officials related to the election process to cease use of election machines. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Um, I called Susan Ellsworth and I thought she was getting up, but that wasn't Susan Ellsworth. Did I, did I miss her? She's gone? Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, Miss Veronica Corcoran. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, Mr. Hickman, are you aware that you are playing with human life, with the people of Arizona? Uh, are you sure you're not trying to hide something? Makes me feel when every time I come here, you know, when people say something against the government, it seems like you're not happy about this. Isn't that something that what America is all about? We should embrace our criticism. And we are here to save your soul, maybe, hopefully. Because you see, if you think that you are doing something with the people, if you work with Dan Farley, he's, he betrayed the people. I know, I, I recruited Dan Farley, I told him about the PC many years ago. LD4 and Dan Farley is your little get out, oh, we, we are working with the people. And while you discriminate, and you know what, AZGOP DeWitt came into LD3 and took over when they had a disagreement, like in a family, you have no business there. LD will take itself, people will make a decision. If you want, I don't know if you have anything to hide, it he feels like you are afraid of something. But you know what, sir? Truth always win, God always win. I encourage you, look, I give up my career. I was an architect, I worked for government, I left. I couldn't do this because it was against the people. You know, conscious, Bill Gates, talk, talk about conscious. We need, we need to start, as Republicans, we need to start, make tough decisions and pay, less, get less money because your money right now is blood, covered with blood. You know how much human trafficking is happening in this country, sir? Our border is open, wide open, children are raped daily. Sir, your money is covered with blood. Please save yourself, for God's sake. Thank, thank you for being here today. Uh, let's, okay, final four. Uh, blue crawling. Oh God, my eyes. Barbara, I'm sorry, Barbara Rat Ratty. I'm sorry, Barbara. Uh, Jeff Caldwell and um, John Kane. Did John? Was that? Did, yeah. Did he already have public comment? Or I, mean, I believe you already called on him. For okay. Public comment. Okay. Thank. You. All right. Uh, Blue Crawley. Thanks. Blue, thanks for joining us. Mac was here so he could have conveyed this over to uh, Mag. I went to, like I said, that uh, retreat that they had, and instead of dealing with the current legislation that if it's passed, only 3.5% uh, of uh, the RPTA's funds will go for light rail, all other light rail funding is going to have to be through the cities or whatever. And instead of dealing with that, because like right now, we've got close to 450 planners in that over at 
RPTA Valley Metro Rail, and two thirds of those are Valley Metro Rail. At that retreat, instead of getting a plan together to aggressively institute uh, mass transit throughout this whole region, what they did is concentrate on, let's double the amount of Allied Burton on the rail to the tune of $100 million. Now, right now, it costs a little less than $100 million a year just to operate the bus system. I'd rather have those monies go into doubling the size of the buses and getting those things done and addressed. But instead, the uh, system goes out of its way, as Steiger used to say, to exist and continue. Uh, when I heard the last things from uh, the head of the RPTA Valley Metro, she said that they're trying to institute a code of conduct. Well, the code of conduct is on the rail. It's not on the bus. And I don't see where you're going to be able to tell people what to wear on the bus, because you have a thing on code of conduct for soil clothing, where um, you go out of your way to deal with people tr uh, trespassing. But my time is up, and yes. I'll see you in two weeks. Thank you, Blue. Appreciate it. All right. Um, Miss. Ms. Ratty? Okay, I'm sorry. I want to make sure I get it right. Ms. Ratty. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I heard you guys say earlier today, I heard you guys earlier today say that you operate under the state statutes. Well, I'd like to know, do you operate under the Arizona Constitution? Hmm. You were served... I see once again today this monstrous affidavit, which you've been served many times right in this room, but um, it informs you about the unconstitutional things that are done in our election process, which was part of a writ filed against you and read to you the last on, on 818. Now I would like to know, and I've asked you personally this question once before, what has uh, what has been done to get our elections back to constitutional standards, such as getting rid of these third-party contracts, Runbeck especially, Runbeck, Dominion, Eric, others. What, who, you know, I'd like to know who, who signed these contracts and how do you get rid of them since they're unconstitutional? Now, I know you can't answer my question, but I'd like the people to wonder the same thing that I wonder. Um, what have you done making one day paper ballot hand count as the Constitution procedure is? I'd like to know, once again, and this has been brought up, I'm sorry to bring it up again, but why aren't you getting rid of these machines? The machines are supposed to be certified. They don't get certified by the proper people. They are, they, uh, they break our chain of custody and they take away our private ballot. So once again, I'm sure I won't get an answer, but I think everybody in this room probably has the very same questions that I have. Thank, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Caldwell. Chair Supervisors, thank you very much. Um, so I wasn't able to reply to the lawyers who told me that we should not worry about um, precinct to point E signatures requirements because they joked and said we can't get dead people's signatures, which is actually true. Um, I don't disagree with that. However, when we look at this policy, um, number V, policy, it's five, B, uh, little b, it says, upon receiving a request from the ch county chairman for the applicable political party, so this is the pointy, it states um, that, let's see here, I'm sorry, it's under number 2B, two, 2B, two and it states in item 1, 
so you got little b, then you got i, then you got ii, then you have one, a signature of the appointee is not required. It's in the policy. And so since we got guidance from the lawyers stating that this is actually supposed to be in item number three, I highly recommend before you implement the policy to amend that part and put it down there since that's what the lawyer said that it's supposed to be under. So I don't believe that it would be out of order to make that amendment since that's what they told us that that is where it's supposed to be. Uh, currently it's not. And it currently states under the point E that their signature is not required. Uh, it's very concerning to me. Um, so I, I do greatly appreciate that. And I do know um, that you gave me an opportunity to speak today more than last time. And I do greatly appreciate that. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Okay, I believe that uh, finishes the public comment period. Um, next is item number 88, supervisor summary of current events. And um, I will remind everyone that's not here in the building that Jack Sellers had to go to a meeting and I believe Steve Gallardo did as well. But I do have a quorum uh, in attendance. Um, I'll go first to uh, Supervisor Galvin. Um, Supervisor Galvin, are you here? Mr. Chairman, I am here. Um, I am under the weather. I do look forward to uh, being at the next public meeting in person. Thank you. Okay. Um, would you like to make any comments or are you, or are you uh, sending it over to Bill? No, I'm going to spare the wonderful crowd that's gathered today my froggy voice. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, Supervisor Gates, thanks for, thanks for sticking with us today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate it. Thank you for allowing me to attend remotely. I uh, just want to put in a big plug for the Diamondbacks. They've been on a nice run, and I believe they're they're leading their game right now. So hopefully they can uh, they can make it into the playoffs and make a deep run into the playoffs. And then finally, I did want to comment on something that was said today uh, during public comment. The comment was made that a Christian would not be allowed to say a prayer in Afghanistan. I couldn't agree more about that. But fortunately, in this country, under our First Amendment, folks of all different faiths have the right, the constitutional right, to practice their religion. And I was proud to invite, and thank you very much, Mr. Chair, for allowing her to come, a, a, a heroine from, uh, from Afghanistan, a wonderful young woman who literally uh, skirted death to come here to this country to make a new life for her and others. And I appreciate that she came and gave us a prayer um, in her religion and in her language. And I think for people who think that that's not American, they need to reread their constitution. That's exactly what this country is about. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Stop. Would you stop? It's not your time to talk. You're ridiculous. So one second, Bill. She's going for clicks. Hold on. Do you want to say something else and tape yourself? Please. Uh, thank you for escorting yourself out and making. Please film that. All right. So Bill, go ahead. I was done, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bill. So uh, this leads me to the, the, the end of the day, and I want to appreciate all of our staff and all of our agency heads uh, as they wait to find out if there's something else that you would like to hear from your supervisors uh, and the fiscal authority, I guess, of this county uh, as we continue to do the people's business. I appreciate it. Um, I'm taking a look and it's just kind of odd because I make sure that uh, th I do the best I can to provide the public comment period, people to talk uh, on agenda items, hear it out, hear if they found something. Um, and then when it comes to our time to talk uh, for the people of our district, everyone's filed out. So I want the people that are here from the public to understand um, one thing, I, be I believe in the public comment period, I believe that we should have the ability to hear you, 
but you should also, with grace and humility, maybe want to stick around and find out the last five minutes. There might be something that comes out of our mouth that's important to, to your district, uh, to your families. Uh, one thing I'd like to say is uh, I got to see the county do something incredible with a small amount of resources by partnering up with a very small city uh, municipality, which is El Mirage, uh, eight years ago. Uh, I was able to help open a park, working with the city of El Mirage uh, in a flood control structure. Uh, and I looked at that and went, good luck, right? It's, an, it's a basin, it's where all the water rolls out of uh, two different neighborhoods. And um, this, just yesterday, I was opening up a trailhead used with CDAC funds uh, in order to partner up with El Mirage, a, a small city with hardly any sales revenue um, uh, that was able to do something for their citizens alongside uh, Maricopa County. It opened up a trailhead and parents could be now be able to see one mile instead of underbrush and overgrowth, they can see their kids at play a mile away through these neighborhoods. It's joined two neighborhoods and it was uh, for the price of I believe the county was at 400,000 and El Mirage was 600,000 using CDAC funds. And I, I was very appreciative. The mayor was there, the entire council was there. Uh, little cities, little areas, uh, unincorporated areas seem to be forgotten in this big valley. And uh, I was happy to see something like that uh, in, in the flesh and ju the joy that these residents have. Um, so I appreciate to board uh, for looking into these things all, miles down the road and being able to find small amounts of money to do something great for communities. So um, with that, uh, I appreciate everybody being here and outlasting. Uh, Bill, thank you. You told me you could stick around till two. That gave me enough time uh, to get through all of these, all of these speaker slips uh, to hear uh, a a ministerial function that has lasted over a month to show the people and the PCs that we like to do things openly and transparently as much as we possibly can to bring good government. I found it striking as people that were yelling at us and listening to some of the arguments, but a particular party chairman sat there and let us take abuse and he had no problem with that, okay? So um, it was time to stand up and, uh, and let's just say everyone's just fine uh, when people are throwing barbs at this board and uh, I couldn't be happier uh, to perform that function for this county uh, as chairman this year and for the, my many years as supervisor. So with that, we are adjourned. Thank you, Mr.